And we have a splendid afternoon here in Chicago, Illinois. And a lot of the stars in the game for both of these teams, though they're struggling in the AL Central. And Fox Saturday Baseball presents the Minnesota Twins against the Chicago White Sox. And as you know, the White Sox are loading a lot of their big names, and they're looking to the future without question. Dick Stockton, along with Hall of Famer, Burt Blyvill, 11, and Avi Sale Garcia, the 22-year-old, acquired from the Detroit Tigers in the three-team trade, makes his first start in the outfield today for Chicago. Yeah, Garcia played a little bit with the Tigers this year, last year, but this young 22-year-old, Joined the club last night in game two. He had a couple at bats late in the ball game, struck out in his first at bat, and then later in the ball game, he got plunked by Glenn Perkins, the closer for the Minnesota Twins, right there. And he's probably hurting a little bit, but he is in that starting lineup. And speaking of the Minnesota Twins, the veteran on that ball club, Justin Morneau, his name was mentioned in the trade deadline going in July, which is not very good for him. But, boy, since August 1st, has he picked it up. Five home runs. He's driven in 11 runs. So, Bert, despite the fact that the Twins in the White Sox are fourth and fifth respectively in the division, a lot of the great names in baseball that we followed throughout the past several years will be on display today in Chicago. Coming up, it'll be the Twins and the White Sox. And we're set to go. And the starting lineups will be brought to you by Taco Bell. Sometimes you got to live Moss. For the Twins, Brian Dozier will be at second base. Joe Maurer behind the plate. Justin Morneau hitting third at first base. Josh Willingham batting cleanup at DH. Oswaldo Arcia will be in left field. Chris Calabello will be in right. Trevor Plouffe, the third baseman. Cleet Thomas is the center fielder and Pedro Flormon at shortstop batting night against the Brazilian. First Brazilian ever to pitch in the big leagues, Andre Rienzo of the White Sox, 25 years old. Well, Rienzo made two starts for the White Sox, both of them on the road, and they were very good starts, quality starts. 
even though the White Sox ended up losing those ball games, making his first home appearance. And Rienzo from Brazil, the first Brazilian pitcher, the other person from Brazil, Juan Gomes with the Cleveland Indians. He was born in Brazil. So a lot of pride here this afternoon for Rienzo to pitch for the White Sox here in Chicago in his debut at U.S. Cellular Field. And let's take a look at the White Sox defensively. Blake to Cody Garcia, the rookie of 22 year old and Danks in right field. Gillespie, Ramirez, Beckham and Canerco in the infield. Fegley behind the plate for the White Sox who come in 12th in the American League defensively. And last night a power pack doubleheader won by the Twins. They took the first game seven to five and the nightcap in ten. 3 to 2. The opening pitch brought to you by Budweiser, the official beer of Major League Baseball. Great times are waiting. Grab some buds. And Brian Dozier will lead off for the Twins. Scott, a report on Rizenzo is that uh, fastball, little cut fastball, curveball, slider, and a changeup. So all four pitches. There's a fastball right there for strike one. Dozier hitting 241, 10 homers and 44 runs batted in. A sparkling second baseman to say the least. Fouls this one back, and the count no balls and two strikes. So the Twins winning, and all 10 of their runs in the doubleheader came as a result of doubleheaders. Don't remember the last time that's happened. 11 home runs hit in that doubleheader yesterday. Seven by the Twins, four for the White Sox. And the Twins winning game one, seven to five, and then winning the nightcap three to two. Ron Gardenhire in his 13th season as manager of the Twins. One two pitch and a shot to third base. Gillespie blocks it in front of him, recovers and throws out Dozier for the first out of the game. Twins coming in at 51 and 62. They have one two straight, but they are 16 and a half out of the lead. And uh, when you look at the White Sox and the Twins, Bert, these teams really dominated in the early 2000s, you know, this division without question. Yeah, the White Sox definitely are in a retooling mode by trading a lot of the veterans away. And we'll show you some of those throughout the ballgame who has been traded away. But the Twins, not bad offensively. Of course, when you surround your club, a guy around a guy like Joe Maurer, a 3 20 lifetime hitter currently hitting at 316 50 in the American League. You know, good things hopefully will happen for the Twins, but they, as we'll see throughout the ballgame, they need better starting pitching. One ball and one strike, and there, as Bert mentioned, Maurer fifth with a 316 average. His batting average uh, down in this month has really slipped big time, takes up high, and the count two balls in one strike. But he does rank fourth in the American League on on base percentage. You know, Dickie, that's had such an up and down year. He started off hot, then he got cold and then hot. It's been that type of year for Joe Maurer, but this guy could hit in his sleep. Probably one of the game's best two strike hitters. You know, I think a Wade Boggs, I think a Tony Gwynn, guys that had great eyes at the plate, wanted to see four or five pitches, especially from a young pitcher like. Rienzo, he, who he's never faced, he's going to take some pitches and hopefully now with two strikes, we'll see. What to, this is really what Joe Maurer becomes his be, the best hitter. Three balls and two strikes. Morneau is on deck for the Twins, who have uh, not hitting their team batting average, really the lowest in 32 years, and a one hopper and blocked by Beckham, and he recovers. So, a couple of hot shots to infielders. That were blocked in the right places by the Chicago third baseman and second baseman, respectively. Mowers retired two out to Morneau. Well, what a day at the plate for Justin Morneau in game one. Two home runs. That's a grand slam. His 20th career two run home run ball game. His seventh grand slam. That in late in the ball game in the ninth inning, a solo home run. And here is Morneau, and he takes outside ball one. It was his first grand slam home run since July of 2009 against Oakland and seventh career Grand Slam. Here's the 1-0 pitch from Rienzo is in for the strike. One ball and one strike. 
you know, Dick, one thing going back to the ball that uh, that Dozier hit, also Maurer hit. Watch both if both those infielders used their body to knock it down, and then they barehanded it and got the out at first base. That's how you play those balls. To get your glove out of the way after that ball pretty much is dead in front of you. Pick it up with your bare hand and get it over to first. Both of them very nice plays. Two balls and two strikes as Morno fouls off the fastball. You know, Dick, we have a lot of youngsters that watch the game, and I always, as a youngster growing up, I watched games as much as I could, and I learned from these big leaguers how to play a ball like that. You know, don't put your glove in there and get the ball because you're taking more time to get the ball over to first. It's one area that the White Sox want to improve on. That's defense. They've made 76 errors on the year. Too many. Ball four, and Morneau draws a two-out walk from Andre Rienzo, making his third big league start, but the first here at U.S. Cellular Field. Made his debut July 31st. He did not allow an earned run in seven innings at Cleveland. And then he allowed two earned runs in six innings against the Tigers. Here's Josh Willingham, the DH. Willingham hitting 220 with 11 homers and 38 runs batted in. Uh, Willingham just activated off the disabled list. He had and a throw gets surgery. by. And going to second base is Morno. Well, I was just talking about the errors, a little mental mistake sometimes in the errors. Ball that uh, got past Conurco, Rien Rienzo trying to get Justin, who's not a base stealing threat. I uh, threw over there, might have surprised Conurco. Take a look right here. That ball into the uh, more no, so Conurco had no chance. An error will be charged to R Rienzo. And Justin Morneau getting into scoring position with two outs. And as you were saying, uh, Willingham just coming off that DL Friday. Had arthroscopic knee surgery early in July and homered in game two. Now here's a guy that the Twins missed for about five weeks because of what he brings to the plate. Last year, 35 home runs. He drove in 110 runs. And you go back to that, even in Oakland, you know, he had over 30 home runs and drove in over 100 runs. So, yeah, the Twins have missed his bat in the lineup, especially from the right side of the plate. Good curveball there by Rienzo. Rienzo, 25 years old, we already said, from uh, Brazil, signed by the White Sox as a free agent out of Brazil. Just showing again where baseball has come, you know, going over to Europe and signing these players that used to be just South America, but now they're going all over the world. One ball and two strikes to Willingham. Oswaldo. Arcia on deck for the Twins. Arcia with the game winning home run in the 10th inning last night to cap the doubleheader sweep. Breaking ball into the dirt and a good play by Fegley behind the plate. And the count now two balls and two strikes. These teams between 2000 and 2010 won a combined nine division titles last three years the twins have the second lowest winning percentage in the big leagues and boy how things have plummeted for these two proud franchises yeah the uh, white Sox went to the world series and won it the twins went the postseason they just could not get there here's the 2-2 pitch and a breaking ball just missed inside and rienzo and the other White Sox wanted it. They appealed to the first base umpire, Dan Iasonia. Well, where's the pitch right there? It's not always where the catcher catches it. It's where it crosses the plate. That is an outstanding curveball right there. So the third straight full count to a Twins hitter for Andre Rienzo, making his first home start. Payoff pitch and strike three. And so the first strikeout. Bordeaux is stranded at second. Twins don't score, and the White Sox coming up in the first.
White Sox is Robin Ventura. Six gold gloves and nearly 300 career home runs and the starting lineup for the White Sox brought to you by Taco Bell. Sometimes you got to live Moss. Gordon Beckham leading off. Connor Gillespie hitting second. Alexi Ramirez batting third. And Adam Dunn, the DH at cleanup. Paul Canerco hitting in the fifth slot. Avisele Garcia batting sixth. Jordan Danks batting seventh. And at batting eighth, Josh Fegley behind the plate. And Blake Ciccone hitting ninth against Mike Pelfrey. Yeah, Pelfrey making his 21st start. The lack of wins. Only uh, two wins for Mike Pelfrey going back to May 10th. So a guy that, uh, you know, came over, he went through the Tommy John surgery last year in May. It just uh, has not worked out for him. Very high ERAs, averaging only five innings a start. And the Twins, uh, you know, their bullpen is overused already, so they're looking for a good start here for Mike Pelfrey here this afternoon. Their starters are ranking 14th in the league at 5.16, bullpen third, so there you see the contrast. As the pitch is up and in, two balls in one strike to Beckham, who's hitting 306 with three homers and 16 runs batted in. Beckham average up big this year after hitting only 234 last year. Power numbers are not as the same. And, um, you know, like Dozier at second base for the Twins, he's been an outstanding glove man at second. Yeah, he had that uh, hamate bone operation back in April, and they feel that once that is completely healed in that left hand, then the power will return. But he's changed his batting stance a little bit. He used to be more upright right there, but now he's crouching down, and he's made very good contact, hitting over 300. Jeff Manto, the hitting coach, is something that he's uh, worked with. We're talking about uh, offensively, but defensively, Beckham, one of the better uh, defensive second basemen. He makes that fantastic. Look at him land on his head right there. Uh, we're going to go try that after the game, Dick, you and I. All right, I'll watch you, <laughs> and I do all the time, so uh, usually on the air, but I'll see you do that. Three balls and two strikes to the leadoff man, Gordon Beckham, with Connor Gillespie to follow. But you saw Jeff Manto in the background right there, keeping an eye on Beckham. See him uh, crouch down a little bit. And then picks that leg up, and a bad start for Pelfrey. A walk. Beckham on at first, and Connor Gillespie hitting 239, coming to the plate with nine homers and 26 runs batted in. And here's Gillespie, who's two for five with a home run off of Mike Pelfrey. And you look at the White Sox, the story, of course, the hot story yesterday, Alex Rios traded to the Texas Rangers with a million dollars for a player to be named later, a utility infielder. And so uh, since July the 12th, Matt Thornton, Jesse Crane, Jake Peavy, and now Rios have exited the Chicago White Sox. Yeah, Thornton and Peavy going to the Boston Red Sox, Jesse Crane to the Tampa Bay Rays, and Rios yesterday going to the Texas Rangers after losing Nelson Cruz. Pretty good pickup for the Texas yeah. Rangers. That's and what I think. Everyone got what they wanted because the Red Sox needed a starter in Peavy and the Tigers needed a shortstop in Jose Iglesias. That was a good trade for, I think, for all three teams involved. Owen won the count to Gillespie with Alexi Ramirez on deck. Infield and outfield playing basically straight away. Infield a double play depth. And a breaking ball hit into the air to left field. Arcia. And he makes the play for the first out. Beckham goes back to first with Ramirez coming up for the White Sox. Yeah, here are the four key players for the White Sox. So they are retooling. Matt Thornton, Jesse Crane, Jake Peavy, big part of their pitching staff. Of course, Thornton and Crane in the bullpen. Jake Peavy, I mean, what a gamer he is. And then Alex Rios. Actually, the last game that you and I did together, Dick, yes. was in Washington. Jake Peavy shut out the Nationals, if you remember that ball game. He pitched great. You've got one of the greatest memories I've known because uh, we haven't worked that many games. And no, it's this is our second game, so I should remember the first one. This one I'll forget. Well, this is really our third game. Is it our third yes, game? Yes, it is. Oh, first. see. So maybe the memory, memory isn't is. as good as I thought. <laughs> <laughs> one ball and no strikes to Alexi Ramirez, who's... Hitting 286 on the year. He's tied for eighth in the American League in hits. 
Ramirez hitting two home runs in yesterday's ball games. One in the first, one in the second. And it was the first home run that he hit since April 3rd. So he was on uh, quite a slump. But, uh, you know, this is a guy that doesn't hit a lot of home runs. He's more of a line drive hitter. He's always had very good success against Twins pitching. Coming into this ball game, a 320 hitter against the Twins. And 11 of his 81 career home runs have come against the Twins. So how many at bats since April the third? That's the big question. That, that's a what? lot of at bats. 451. Wow. It pitches inside. <laughs> Two balls in one strike. I knew you would know that. I happen to have it. <laughs> I just said a lot. Yeah. And that is a lot. And that covers it. Two but balls. Ramirez, yeah, Ramirez in his sixth season with the White Sox, uh, you know, from uh, Cuba. He defected back in 2006, 2007, and uh, signed by the White Sox as a free agent. Lead by Beckham at first with one out. Mike Pelfrey and the pitch fouled back and it's two and two to Alexi Ramirez with Adam Dunn the DH on deck for Chicago. One thing Dick that uh, Rick Anderson the pitching coach for the twins is trying to get Mike Pelfrey to do is pick up the pace a little bit. He has a tendency to take a lot of time between pitches especially with a runner on. So Rick Anderson, he's been with Ron Garden hire since day one when Gardy got hired in 2002. That he wants to pick up the pace. You're going to have better defense behind you if you pick up that sign and throw the ball. Full count now to Alexi Ramirez. Uh, give any idea of putting the White Sox in perspective. They have not finished last in a division since 1989. When there were seven teams in the AL West, they won three straight from the Yankees this past week after losing ten in a row. Yeah, Ventura last year, the White Sox under his tutelage, the first year, 85 and 77. They were second place behind the Detroit Tigers, only three games out of the Central Division. Well, they had a good year, but a frustrating year. Here, here. goes the runner and a base hit to right field. So the hit and run was on, and going to third base is Beckham, and heading for second base, sliding and safe. There is Ramirez. And the White Sox have runners at second and third and one out, and a threat here in the first inning. Great, great base running by Ramirez. He slapped that ball the other way, maybe a straight steal, maybe a hit and run. But he knew that Thomas, who's a right-handed throwing outfielder, had to go and kind of cross his body to get this ball or Calabello. Calabello coming in, but it's Thomas and Ramirez did not slow down as he rounded first base. So he'll get a double. So runners at second and third, only one out for Adam Dunn. Adam Dunn batting 228, 26 homers, tied for fifth in the league in that department, and 69 runs batted in. 33-year-old left-handed slugger takes outside ball one. Big question for the White Sox here. Is there a team that would be interested in Adam Dunn for the stretch run? I guess he uh, cleared waivers, so, you know, there's, there is that opportunity. Wouldn't he look good on a bench? It, maybe he's not going to play every day, but a threat late in the ball game for a contending ball club. 1-0 and with one out, and that pitch is inside, and so Pelfrey falls behind Dunn. Two balls and no strikes. You see where uh, Dunn ranks on the all-time home run hit hit the uh, leader. I mean, you got Dunn, you got Conerco. Wow, that's a lot of home runs between those two young or those young men. I say young only because I'm old. No, you're spry. <laughs> 2 -0. and a check swing. And uh, Dunn was checking all the way and uh, glanced off his bat. So the count now two balls and one strike. By the way, Adam Dunn this past Wednesday tied their game with the Yankees with a pinch hit RBI single against Mariano Rivera. So a clutch hit there and he. I, I think Pelfrey's going to be very careful here to Dunn too because Dunn's already hit two home runs off of him this year. Eight for 31, all told against Pelfrey, checking the swing inside, and it's three balls and a strike. So Pelfrey, one strike away from loading the base. There's bases. a base hit. Here comes Beckham. Here's the throw, safe, and this game is tied at four. Yes. <laughs> yes. That's Hawk Carlson. <laughs> yes. And they know 
him full well here in Chicago. He's been a landmark broadcaster here, and the pitch is in the dirt. Ball four, second walk here in this first inning for Mike Pelfrey. Loads the bases with one out, and Paul Canerco coming up. Yeah, Pelfrey now 35 walks and 104 innings pitch. So Joe Maurer will try to get hopefully a ground ball off the bat of Paul Canerco here. But Canerco, as we just showed you, he's right behind Adam Dunn in, in uh, career home runs with 431. And he has hit 50 of those 431 against the Twins. And he tied Cal Ripken Jr. for 44th all time with that home run. So here is Canerco, who's got the home run power, could give the White Sox a healthy early lead in this game. Not having the Paul Canerco year with the nine home runs. It's a career 283 hitter. Hit 298 last year when he hit 26 home runs. Change up missing outside ball one. The White Sox coming in last in runs scored. Next to last in on base percentage. And 14th next to last in slugging percentage. This in a hitter's ballpark after ranking fourth in runs last season. Now, Pelfrey making his first career start here at U.S. Cellular Field, his third career start against the White Sox. 1 0, the count to Paul Canerco. There's a strike. Good pitch that time by Pelfrey. Yeah, he's got that fastball that'll run back over the plate a little bit. That ball started outer half of the plate, down and away. That will create a ground ball out. What he's looking for if you can keep the ball down. And in the Central Division, the Tigers, who have Really put it on lately the Detroit Tigers who won 12 in a row before losing to the Yankees yesterday came back and beat the Yankees 9-3 Miguel Cabrera hit his 35th home run and this foul fly Unable to get to it is a Morno and the count now one and two Belfry, 29 years old, making his 20th start. Now only seven quality starts. That's why I said earlier, Dick, he's averaging five innings per start, not what the, the Twins need in that rotation. Getting back to those Tigers, who now have a seven-game lead, seven and a half right now, over the Indians. Kansas City has been red hot lately. So they're starting to open up quite a margin. And he knew it was a matter of time when the Tigers took off and put a streak together like they have been able to do with their starting staff and their offense. Pelfrey ready for the one two pitch to Canerco and fouls it out of play. Well, Cleveland they, Indians have done a pretty good job. Terry Francona in his first year with the club hanging in there with them. Did a good job, but Detroit went into Cleveland and swept the Indians to really take that seven and a half game lead. They, you know, they lost uh, Detroit did in New York last night, but what a ball game that was. They lost four to three in ten innings. So for Pelfrey, his 25th pitch is upcoming. One ball and two strikes with one out. Two walks and a double here in the White Sox first. And the pitch just missed hitting him, and the count is even two and two. Panerko in his 15th season with the Chicago White Sox, six time All Star. Originally signed by the Dodgers back in 1994. Came up with the Dodgers a little bit, then the Reds, and then came over here to Chicago, where he has probably been Chicago's hero if you're a White Sox fan. Well, Abi Sail Garcia, highly touted, 22 year old, on deck with the bases loaded, one out. And the count is full, three and two to Paul Canerco. Pelfrey having problem with his location here in this first inning. There's Garcia. Pretty ragey 22 year old at 6'4, 240 pounds. Combined strength and speed, you've got a comer right there. Dangerous pitch right here from Mike Pelfrey. He has to come in with a pitch. He does not want to walk in a run. See where they go. And a line drive left field. Arcia makes the catch. Tagging up is Beckham, and he'll score easily. And the White Sox take a one to nothing lead.
Paul Konerko with his 40th run batted in of the year on a sacrifice fly. And Chicago leads 1-0. Runners at first and second with two down. The idea of a hitter, a major league hitter, is trying to get that pitch count into your favor. Now, Peltry missed with a slider, then came with the strike to even the count, then a couple foul balls right there off the bat of Canerco. Peltry trying to go in, then missed away again. Got the count to three and two. Canerco hit it hard, but a lot of topspin created that sacrifice flyout. And the White Sox do take a 1 0 lead. So here's Abisael Garcia. And the first pitch is a strike. As Bert mentioned, Garcia made his debut as a pinch hitter, struck out, and then was hit by a pitch. Stayed in the game in the outfield in the second game of the doubleheader. He went down to Triple A after the trade. Was hitting 370. He was tearing up Triple A. So you know it's time now to retool here in Chicago and see what they get from this young man. Young man from Venezuela, only 22 years old, great size, six foot four, 240 pounds, and hitting 379 this season for three minor league teams. One ball, one strike, two out. Runners at first and second for the White Sox. There's a strike. I know when he first came up with the Tigers last year, a lot of people comparing him the way he stands in a box and his size to Miguel Cabrera. Maybe doesn't have the power that Cabrera has, but has the same physique and, you know, very quick bat. So with uh, Beckham, and Garcia, and the likes of Chris Sale, White Sox uh, building. Trying to do the youth movement. Just getting a piece of it to stay alive is Garcia. It remains one ball and two strikes. So there's some facts about young Garcia, fluent in Spanish and English. And the same home country as Miguel Cabrera. Married and his wife is expecting a, a son in September. Yeah, if you're from Venezuela and you're built like him, why wouldn't you want to be like Cabrera? Future Hall of Famer if he continues what he's doing. Miguel Cabrera. The pitch taken for ball two and two. And second baseman Dozier is shading towards second to keep Alexei Ramirez as close as he can to second. Dick, I said, you know, Pelfrey averaging five innings a start, already 32 pitches here. That's how you don't go deep into the ball game by having these type of innings. Fifth time this year that he's thrown at least 25 pitches in a first inning. And this is his 33rd swing and a miss. Garcia goes down. That'll do it. But the White Sox get a run. And after one, it's the Sox one. Twins nothing.
baseball game break. Dodgers and Rays in their second meeting ever at Chavez Ravine. And Adrian Gonzalez's second home run in just his last 26 games makes it a 2-0 lead for the home team. Dodgers trying to make it five in a row overall as we get you back. Dick and Burt in Chicago. That should be enough runs for Zach Grinke starting that ball game for the Dodgers. He'd been pitching very good baseball. All right, Matt, thank you. And uh, the Dodgers trying to win their fourth in a row. And uh, Tampa Bay and L.A. Don't be surprised if you see them deep into postseason with the way these teams have performed as of late. Oswaldo Arcia, who hit a home run in each game of the doubleheader yesterday, including the game winner in the 10th, swings at the first pitch and grounds it to Beckham for the first out. Today's telecast presented by Budweiser is sponsored by the 2013 Ford F-150 with Echo Boost. And by Taco Bell. Sometimes you got to live Moss. Got to love that if you're a starting pitcher to get one pitch, one out. Exactly what Rienzo was able to do right there off the bat of Arcia. Chris Colabello hitting 205, four homers and seven runs batted in. Had a double and a home run in game one Friday. Almost say that about everyone, a home run Friday. <laughs> because both teams really hit enough of them. And Rianzo, and you mentioned the one pitch, gets this one over for a strike at 22 pitches in the first inning. So looking for economy here in inning number two. Palabalo with a lot of power, especially the other way. All four of his major league home runs have been hit the other way. A guy that spent seven years in independent baseball. 29 years old, made his big league debut in May. And... In a game winning home run at Seattle in the 13th inning. His first big league homer. One and one to Colabello, and time is called by home plate umpire Lance Barrett, Dan Iasonia, as we mentioned, the first base umpire, the crew chief. Brian Knight is at second, and Mark Carlson is over at third. That's down low. You got to pull for guys like uh, Chris Colabello Bello because of his longevity in the minor leagues. Didn't give up on himself. Wanted to keep playing the game of baseball. Was really hitting the ball well down in Rochester. The Twins called him up, getting that opportunity at this level. Ground ball and pass. The dive of Ramirez into center field, and Colabello is on with the first hit of the game for the Twins. A one out single in the second inning. Well, if we were talking about uh, soccer, Brazil, well, it would be an obvious thing there. But as a baseball pitcher, the first ever. 5,219 miles between Chicago and Sao Paulo for the first Brazilian-born pitcher in big league history. That just shows you if you love the game of baseball, if you work your tail end off, they will find you. Those scouts will find you if you have the talent. Here's Trevor Plouffe who takes a strike. Runner at first with one out here in the second inning. Plouffe is hitting 236, 10 homers, and 38 runs batted in. Had a breakout year with 24 homers last season. Double figures this year. And that pitch taken for a ball one and one. And you mentioned Jan Gomes of the Indians, the other Brazilian in the big league baseball. The difference is Gomes went to high school in Miami, attended right. the University of Tennessee. Rienzo was scouted and signed in Brazil, and he goes there during the offseason. Yeah, he had a, a lifetime career. He had a, uh, a no-hitter earlier this year in AAA, uh, back on July 25th in AAA. Had 11 strikeouts in that ball game. Down in AAA, Charlotte, the AAA affiliate for the Chicago White Sox. He went eight and six in 20 starts, three complete games, one shutout, that being the no hitter. Breaking ball, pop foul, and out of play, and the count two and two now to Plouffe with one out and one on in the twin second. Well, oh, Trevor Plouffe right here, watch him in Kansas City going over the railing. And luckily he was okay. Able to hold on to that ball. Another breaking ball. This one hit in the air to right field. Jordan Danks making the catch for the out. By the way, Jordan Danks 
in the starting lineup. First time with his brother, first time in his career. Yeah, yes, pretty cool. There's John Danks right there. He got a no decision in the uh, start in game one yesterday that the Twins ended up winning seven to five. But John Danks, six plus innings. He went out for the seventh and walked the first two batters, and that was the inning that Justin Morneau hit the grand slam. So a good effort by John Danks. And kind of cool that your brother's playing in the outfield while you're on the mound. Cleve Thomas taking ball one, playing center field today for the Twins. I have two brothers, and I wouldn't want them behind me if I was pitching. They had no range whatsoever. I hope they don't hear this. <laughs> one and zero, oh, the count to Thomas as the back of getting on base. This one he pops up. Ramirez behind second base, and that'll do it. So Calabello gets a hit with one out, and the Twins lead one. One nothing White Sox after an inning and a half. By Budweiser, the official beer of Major League Baseball. Great times are waiting. Grab some buds. And here are the four keys to the game, Bert Violet. Yeah, for the Minnesota Twins, they need more quality starts. 44 of the 113 games so far for the Twins. Only 44 quality starts for the White Sox. Yeah, they need to put more runs on the board. Fewest in the American League as far as scoring runs. Bottom third of the White Sox order here in the second inning against Mike Pelfrey. Jordan Danks looks at a curveball for a strike. I thought Pelfrey uh, really worked out of a tough situation in that first inning. Bases loaded, only one out. Only allowed one run. So even though he threw a lot of pitches, it's only a one-run ball game. Bert, we have to introduce Glenn Perkins. He's waiting oh, we patiently we in do. the microphone in the in the dugout oh, six and save having a great it. year with a terrific bullpen. Glenn, thanks for being with us. You bet, guys. Thanks for having me. And hey. you know, uh, with Danks coming up, <laughs> the first thing I like you to the experience of the All-Star game with your buddy from from high school, Joel Maurer. What was I want to know the highlight of that whole experience for that few days you know there was so many and and, and going there with him uh, you know like you said we, we've been in all-star games since high school together and uh, it, it's such an incredible experience so many memories but uh, you know it was it was having my kids down on the field for the home run derby I, I growing up you see that you see the guys you know they, they sit down on the foul foul line and fly ball hit deep to right field and going back it's gone Jordan Jenks with a home run his second of the year and the White Sox take a two to nothing lead that's surprising another home run here hit in Chicago again 11 hit in two games yesterday and Danks getting a fastball from Pelfrey 
Makes it a two to nothing ball game. And you know, I have to credit Mr. Perkins for having the wherewithal to know when to lay out and let the call go. Yeah, but, well, yeah that's I learned that a long time ago. When the ball's in play, you got to stop and let you guys do your job. So, boy. no, you know what though, it was it, it was having my kids down on the field was was it was uh was really cool. And then, and then seeing Mariano, the whole thing for Mariano was uh you know that that's a once in a lifetime thing right there. You know, speaking of Rivera, you know he had a blown save last night. I think it's only the ninth time he has had back-to-back -back blown saves. Yeah, Perk. Yesterday, you pitched in both ball games. You pitched in in game one with a four to, I believe it was a seven to three lead when you came in yep. in the ninth inning. You gave up a couple runs. Okay, a non-save situation. Then you come back in a nightcap in a three to two ball game save situation. The mental part. We see sometimes, you know, closers like yourself. In non-safe situations, what's the difference? You know, it's it, it's it's that's the hardest part. You get so much more adrenaline, but you know, each time you got to tell yourself you go out there, and and, it, and it's funny when you go out there in a game like that last night, when a one-run game, I already pitched that day, you know, and, and you ha you're trying to tell yourself, you know what, just get the outs, and, and you're trying to make it not a one-run game. You're trying to, in your head saying, you know what, just get these guys out, don't worry about it. And, and then in those other games, you're trying to create create pressure, create adrenaline, and uh, you know it's it, it's just going out there and, and 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 getting the job done. But you also you're going to take your lumps, and, and you learn that a, a, yeah, as you play. And you know, just like Mariano, I'm sure he's going to go in there today and be ready to go, and and know that that nobody's perfect. You're going to give up runs, and it's how you bounce back. Josh Fegley behind the plate for the White Sox, with the count three balls and two strikes. Big league debut on July the fifth. Did three homers in his first five games none since then but he draws a walk that's the third pass issued by Mike Pelfrey so the leadoff homer by Danks and Fegley walks and Blake to Cody will come to the plate the left fielder batting in the ninth slot thank you Len you were the twins number one pick back in 2004 out of the University of Minnesota born in St. Paul you know your name was kind of mentioned throwing around a little bit in July maybe a, a trade possibility but uh, you love it here in Minnesota don't you? yeah you know and, and like you said growing up here and you know I signed a deal uh, last winter or last last spring I guess for for four years so you know that that was my intention of I think when you sign a deal like that you know a lot of things can happen but you hope that 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 you're at least there for the duration of that deal and and, and I, I committed myself to you know the next four years here with the twins and hopefully more after that but I'm, I'm focused on you know just just uh, you know making making uh, them proud of, of you know of, of what they've done for me and, and returning the favor and, and that for this one so hopefully I will be able to stick here uh, it's home for me and, and I, I can't imagine myself playing anywhere else call strike to Dakota who hit his first career home run in the nightcap of the doubleheader called up Friday for his third stint with the ball club Owen won the count to him with runner at first Begley and uh, Gordon Beckham the leadoff hitter on deck I but did we have a research a crack research step plan and I, I want to tell you that uh, we, we understand that your last meal uh, tell me if this is true and we all love it but last meal Chicago deep dish pizza is that true yeah I would you know and we actually had Lou Malnati's the other night and uh, man is it incredible pizza I, I've had all three I've had the Gino's East I've had uh, Giordano's and, and uh, now uh, I had Lou Malnati's and well, you're going to eat free now for the rest of your time <laughs> in Chicago in hey, your career. they're all good I, I'd eat them anytime but you, you got to watch it I'm, I'm 30 now and, and so you got to watch yourself pop up is handled by Ploof the third baseman for the first out here in the second inning and Beckham will lead off We're showing some highlights of your career, Glenn. Now, you came up in 2006 with the Twins as a starter, but now you're the closer. What's the big difference for you? I know we talked in spring training, recovering the team. I know that, uh, you know, you're not a guy that fools around out there. You come right after the hitter. Yeah, and, you know, it's just the one inning at a time, or it's, it's such a smaller sample for me, and so I can go out there and I can, I can uh, exert myself a little more. I had trouble pacing myself as a starter and, and, and trying to manage six, seven, eight, nine innings, and... Uh, you know, it just it wasn't it wasn't a thing that I could do day in and day out or, or you know, every five days, whatever. And, you know, so being able to come in every day, knowing that that I get a chance to play keeps me focused and, and then getting out there in those situations. I mean, it, last night in that in that game with a three, you know, a three two game and you got a guy on third and and, and, and two outs. I mean, that's that's what it, that's what I play for. And, and that's so much fun getting through a game like that and, and, and getting them out and shaking hands after a game. So it's you know, it's it's a completely different mindset, but I think it suits me uh, a lot better than being a starter head. Well, you yeah. exude the personality, and it's uh, really a pleasure to have you uh, with us right now. And uh, 
before you go I wanted to ask you about one one other thing one to know count fouled off and that is of course uh, I know that your wife Alicia is a marathon runner and tell us about the 5k run for cystic fiber yeah you know what she's actually out she's in vancouver right now they her and a friend just ran a half marathon out there and uh we got on uh, on august 18th yeah we have a uh, we have a 5k uh 15th 5k dot com is where you go you sign up and we're going to run around minneapolis and then finish on home plate of target field and uh we raise money for cystic fibrosis we have a couple friends with kids uh with cf and and have seen what they've gone through and we've been fortunate enough and blessed to have healthy kids and and so you, you know you hope that uh we can help out. Morneau makes a good stop and saves a base hit. They get the force at second, and Beckham becomes the runner, and he raced his Fegley, so there are two down, and uh, Glenn Perkins, want to thank you. You Really, it's been great having you on. Thanks for coming on our Fox broadcast and uh, letting people see what's behind the pitch. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Perk, thank you. All right, Perk. So, a nice play right there by Justin jumping off that bag and getting that little short hop and Pelfrey maybe a little bit late getting over there to first base. That's why Florimone decided not to throw. So here is Gillespie fly to left. In the first inning two down and the base runner is Beckham. Who scored the White Sox run in the first and the pitch on the outside corner by Pelfrey for a strike. Yeah, we thank Glenn Perkins, but you could hear the his enthusiasm that he has, you know, just as a person. Now, I was going to ask him who's a better runner, he or his wife, if they go out and distance run this. Does she follow him or you does he follow her? Uh, why don't you run I'll, down I'll, to the dugout now? You want me to leave that quick? Huh? We're only in the second <laughs> inning. <laughs> no, you have not worn out your welcome. Not yet. Or, no, but I mean, you know. Usually I do. Well, I don't think so. Connor Gillespie, you know, his at bats against Pelfrey coming in Minnesota, but also both of them spent time in the National League. Gillespie with the Giants, Pelfrey with the Mets. Foul ball out of play. Nope, chasing it, and Lance four rows in, so it's two strikes now to Connor Gillespie. Now if you're a third baseman for the White Sox, and you have a manager like Robin Ventura, wouldn't you pick his brain? Wouldn't you want him to say, you know, hey, how do, how do you play this game? Six time gold glove winner. And, and a great guy, Robin Ventura. He, he's, it's frustrating for him this year, again, after last year when they won 85 ball games. And especially how they have handled themselves in the Central Division. They are only 12 and 33 in the Central Division. And there's 76 games. Another good block by Joe Maurer. 76 games played in the Central Division. These guys will meet 19 times this year. So far, the Twins have won eight of ten. But there, there's the right there. My goodness, you have to win in your division if there's uh, you know 76 of the 162 ball games. That's why the Tigers are doing so well. Not only are they beating up everybody else in the Central Division, they're 31 and 16. One ball, two strikes. To Gillespie. Lead off homer by Danks, giving the White Sox a two to nothing lead. There's a drive hit to center right center field and coming over to make the catch is Calabello and he drops the ball. And the run is going to score. Calabello, who had not made an error coming into this game, had a beat on that ball at right center field. Certainly didn't have to go back for it and seemed to be ready to make the catch. And the run scores, and it's three to nothing. And error charge to Colabello. Don't know if this was a uh, sun affected uh, a blooper right here, but Colabello going over looks like he's got it, and the ball just went over his glove. Beckham he scores. Just missed it. And you know, and, and, and good running by Beckham right here too. You don't give up. That even though it's a fly ball. You run hard, and that's why Beckham scored from first base. First error for Colabello, and here's Alexi Ramirez, who doubled in the first inning. Breaking pitch, big cut that time by Ramirez, and the count is 0-1. So the White Sox, who were swept by the Twins yesterday, coming back and moving out to a 3-0 lead, getting a run in the first inning on a sacrifice fly. Lead off homer by Danks here. And then a run scoring on an error by Colabello in right field. 
Twins have not made a lot of errors, only their 48th error. Baltimore Orioles have the fewest errors in the American League with only 34. Third fewest errors for the Twins, and Ron Gardenhire hasn't had a lot to shout about, really going off and talking about his team's defense, which he was impressed with this year. Fourth in the lead, and a shot foul down the left field line, and the count 0 and 2. To Ramirez. Yeah, Ron Garden and I are especially happy with the guys that are playing second and short right now. Brian Dozier and Pedro Floramon, and he also mentioned Aaron Hicks, who's now currently in Triple A. Uh, got a little bit of a quad pull, not getting a lot of at bats. They hope that uh, he finds his swing a little bit, but right now, uh, Cleats Thomas out in center field, roaming the grounds here at U.S. Cellular Field. And of course you have Joe Maurer behind the plate so pretty steady up the middle if Hicks can uh, prove he can hit major league pitching. Up the middle. Behind the bag Dozier and makes the play to retire the side but not before the White Sox score twice. Jordan Danks leading off with a 414 foot home run and another run coming in on an error and will return to Chicago after a word from your local Fox station. And the Minnesota Twins here in the third inning trailing the White Sox three to nothing and the first pitch from Andre Rienzo is in for a strike Pedro Flormone the shortstop hitting 225 seven homers 35 runs batted in a switch hitter and takes outside ball one we are really pleased to have with us Chris Sale, who uh, beat the Yankees on Tuesday to go 7 and 11. He's an all star, and of course, uh, the ERA of 2.77. And Chris, thanks for being with us. And what, you know, you, you're being mentioned as part of the new wave of the White Sox. And uh, how are you taking all of these moves lately? Um, you take them in stride. Um, you know, we, we obviously haven't played, um, you know, up to expectations. And, you know, usually when stuff like that happens, um, some some things change, but um, you know we're trying to take it as a positive and and move forward collectively as a group and uh, you know just get better as a ball club. Hey Chris, this is a purple eye eleven. You're in your fourth season with the White Sox. Made the All Star team a couple times. Now that you know Jake Peavy's gone, I'm sure he was a big impression for you. Now that you're kind of the ace of the ball club. 
yeah, you know, he, he helped me out, you know, so much, especially in my first year and, and you know, through spring training and leading into this year. Um, you know, just going out there and competing and, and leaving everything you have out there, you know, using your head and um, using your heart at times. And, um, you know, it was tough to see him go. Um, but, you know, you know, that's the nature of the beast. And, you know, as, as much as this is a game, it is a business. And, um, you know, it's not the fun side of it, but, but it happens and you move on. And, um, you know, he's up there in Boston now and enjoying himself. And, um, you know, we're moving forward here, too. Ryan Dozier hit by a pitch after Lormon was retired. Yeah, see where it gets Brian right here. Looks like he got on the maybe skinned his jersey a little bit. But Dozier will take first base. Joe Maurer, the batter, bounced to second his first time up. Twins trailing 3 0. They have had runners on base in the first three innings of this game. We're pleased to have Chris Sale with us in the White Sox dugout. And uh, more to talk to him before this inning is out. First pitch is taken. Now, tell us about your appetite. <laughs> they say you're 180 pounds. Is that is that your listed in case you go into the ring or what? Um, on a good day, I, I guess you could say that. <laughs> so you have a great metabolism. We, we just yeah, sum I've, it up that way. I've uh, I've been been blessed with with I guess digesting food very well and not not gaining any weight. <laughs> um, you know, pizza, ice cream, cheeseburgers, I, whatever I can get my hands on. Um, you know, nothing's better than a nice steak dinner, but. Uh, it sometimes, must be sometimes that, Taco Bell is pretty good too. <laughs> yeah, it must be left-handed pitchers like pizza. We just had Glenn Perkins on the inning prior, and he was talking about the Chicago-style pizza. And you you're in heaven then. You can't beat it. Uh, deep dish, thin crust, but whatever you like, you, you, you'll find it here, and it'll be uh, it'll be darn good. Would that be your last meal? Because Perkins said it would be his last meal. Think about this. <laughs> He's Honestly. too young to think about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't put that on. Put, no, don't I put don't. that on me now. Well, so is Perkins for that matter. But you know, <laughs> yeah, that that wouldn't be a, a bad way to go out though. Okay. Pizza in the belly. <laughs> you know, a lot we, of people refer to you as a young, a uh, sh little shorter version. You're six foot six. Randy Johnson, six nine, six ten. Did you ever watch him pitch and maybe take some uh, pointers from him? Oh yeah. I, I grew up watching him. He was, um, you know, obviously my, my favorite player growing up. Um, you know, just his demeanor. You know what what he did. You know, standing on the mound and just being aggressive and, and competing. I mean, he he competed harder than anybody I've ever seen. And um, I mean, he'd be out there grunting and grinding. I mean, it was it was fun to watch. And um, you know, he was nasty too. To so to be um, you know even the same sentence as him is a is a high honor for myself and um, something that I'm going to keep working at. You take a lot of pride in strikeouts, or is it just part of the game when you get two strikes? Okay, here, hit this. Yeah, I mean, you you, you obviously like punch outs. I don't think there's a pitcher that doesn't. Mm -hmm. um, but you also like quick innings, so it's, you got to find a good good rhythm, and um, you obviously want to keep the pitch count down. But um, you know, there's nothing like <laughs> nothing like striking someone out. Chris Sale is with us. Uh, the Twins, uh, outstanding left-hander who has the seventh-best ERA at 2.77. for White Sox, uh, left-hander in the league, and Joe Maurer, the batter. Twins trying to get back in this game as White Sox lead three to nothing. Dozier is at first base with one out. Justin Morno is on deck. The count: two balls and two strikes against. There goes the runner and the base hit to right field, and well placed. By Maurer going to third base is Dozier. So the second baseman Beckham going to second with the runner going, and Maurer has runners at first and third. That's the second hit of the game for the Twins with Morno coming up. Well, for Joe Maurer, another hit with two strikes on him. You see Dozier looking in, so you know, getting a good jump, but Maurer with two strikes, another base hit. I think half of his hits this year have come with two strikes. So Morno, who walked his first time up, and the tying run at the plate here in the third inning for the Twins against Andre Rienzo. Ball one outside. Chris Sale, you know, for golfers, being tall may not be the answer. You're six six, and yet you played on your high school golf team in Lakeland. I did. Um, that's something I've always enjoyed doing. Um, you know, golf is kind of like my second love, I guess you could say. I like, I don't, I don't get to play a lot during the season, but um, you know, during the off season, especially the first few months of the off season, uh, I'm out there two or three times a week. I try to be, anyways. 
See, Chris, I love golf too, and I always refer to golf like pitching. You know, you're going to have bad innings, you're going to make bad pitches, but then, you know, hopefully the uh, the better part of your game will show up. Yeah, I'm not I'm not much on chipping and putting. That's that's kind of the one thing that well, leaves. You got to work on that. Young man. <laughs> that's how you score. Yeah, I know. My my grandfather uh, used to tell me. Uh, you, you drive for show and putt for dough, so <laughs> you're going the other way on that. Yeah. Right hey, you know, chicks dig the long ball, so <laughs> you know, I like to you know, hit it deep. Chris, thanks for being with I us. I appreciate you guys having Thank me too. Thank you for having us. Thank you, Chris. Chris Continue Sale. success. Count is one ball and two strikes to Morneau with one out. Runners at first and third. Dozier at third. Joe Maurer, who just singled to right, and is a high fly ball deep right field and looking up, and this game is tied. Justin Morneau with his 14th home run of the year has tied the game 3-3. His third game, his third home run in this, in the first three games here. Again, yesterday, a grand slam, a solo home run. Now he adds a three-run home run. Sixth home run here in the month of August. Justin Upton with the Atlanta Braves who are red hot with six home runs and Justin on one swing ties the game and Josh Willingham who took a cold third strike to end the first inning first home run that uh, Rienzo has allowed at this level and it looked like a breaking ball stayed up and Justin didn't miss it. Two balls, no strikes to Willingham. Tenth year in the majors. Came up as a catcher and played for the Marlins, the Nationals, and the A's. Makes a big cut on that pitch low in the zone for a strike. And it's two and one. So Justin Morno now with 67 RBIs to go with his 14 home runs. And all of a sudden, 3-3. Three, three. And there's a call strike. And it's 2-2. Two and two. White Sox getting a run in the first, two in the second. One was unearned. And then the three-run homer here in the third ties it for the Twins. Interesting in that doubleheader sweep. Last night, the Twins were one for 18 with runners in scoring position. That's what the long ball will do. You don't have to worry about getting that extra hit. Call strike three, and Willingham goes down. That's the second strikeout. Both times it's Willingham. Both call third strikes, and there are two down. Oswaldo Arcia. Oh, you see right there where Justin ranks in Twins and Senators. Twins coming over to Minnesota in 1961. Harmon Killebrew, of course, the great home run hitter for the Twins and a great person. Harmon is missed by many. It's a good group right there. Bob Allison, great man. Tony Oliva. A lot of people may not remember youngsters certainly that the twins were the Washington Senators and moved to the Twin Cities and it was shortly after a lot of those names you know combined with uh, pitchers such as uh, Jim Cott Mudcat Grant Camilo Pasquale Camilo Pasquale and the twins uh, won the pennant 1965 and then they lost to the Dodgers thanks to uh, a guy that I grew up idolizing, Sandy Koufax. Here's another drive at deep to right field. Arcia has gone. Home run city. Chicago has been the last two days. And Arcia with his 10th home run. That's three in the series. One in each game yesterday, including the game winner in the 10th. And now the Twins going long ball again have taken a 4-3 to three lead. Well, Twins very high on Arcia. This young man, you know, last year started in single A, now getting a chance to get some major league at bats and doesn't miss that fastball away and showing some power to right center. A line drive home run puts the Twins up four to three. Rienzo upset. And the batter is Chris Calabello, who singled to center his first time up, takes a strike on the inside corner. 
Interesting that all 10 of the Twins runs last night coming as a result of home runs and all four of their runs so far today the same route. And that's unlike the Twins. You know, they're not really a home run hitting ball club, but for some reason the last three ball games they have hit the long ball. And during this marathon of a baseball season some point or another you're going to see everything. Things that you don't think may be possible and we're seeing home run power from the Twins as of late. 0 and 2 to Colabello. And the count 1 and 2 with two out and it all started. After one out Brian Dozier was hit by a pitch Joe Maurer singled him to third and then Morneau hit the home run and then with two out Arcia went deep. Two and two now to Colabello. Talked about the frustrating situation for Ventura in his second year's manager, and of course Ron Gardenhire, who's known the heights, experiencing what he's going through this year himself. Well, the, the game will, you know, make you. It'll get you to the top of the hill, and then it'll make you fall down again. Rianzo did not allow home a home run. In his first two starts in the last couple of batters, he did strike out Willingham, but the uh, three run home run by Moro, one out later, followed by Arcia's solo home run. Rienzo, who's pitched a total of 13 innings coming into this game, no record in his first two starts. And the pitch count mounting. 65 pitches here trying to get the final out here in the third inning. And making him work is Colabello. That is the 32nd pitch of this inning. And now 66 already in the game. Yep. 22, for, 12, 32. Right. 32 pitches so far. And him up. It comes to 66. Yep. Yep. Good California man. Both clubs, uh, you know, used the. Uh, Ventura, especially a lot of guys use out of that bullpen, so they would like ball four and Colabello deeper in the ball game. And that is the second walk issued by Rienzo. Don Cooper, the pitching coach, out to talk to his young right hander. Rienzo, seven seasons in the minor leagues for the Chicago White Sox. 37 minor league wins, only 26 losses, a good ERA at 3.46. 97 minor league starts. Don Cooper, very, very good pitching coach, as Rick Anderson is with the Twins. Trying to settle down his right hander, get him refocused again. Well, all the makings of a High scoring game in this one with a four to three score here in the third inning. And the outlook that we're going into the bullpens for both clubs, it appears. Well, you know, baseball put this pitch count in now. You know, 100 pitches is that magic number. So, you know, what you what you look at is if a guy averages 20 inning or 20 pitches an inning, he's done after five innings. So these innings, like he had in the second inning, where he only needed 12 for Zenzo. For Zenzo that's what you want. You want to stay away from where he's at right now, and that's a big pitch count in the third inning. 0 and 1 to Ploof, who flied to right his first time. And there's a breaking ball in for the strike. The Twins, by the way, who hit 21 home runs in July. Talk about your point about where did this come from? I've already hit 15 this month. No balls, two strikes to Ploof. On at first base is Calabello. Bloop the eighth batter of the inning for the Twins takes the ball one and two. You think about that 15 home runs already here in August and nine of them have been hit over the last two plus games. Mike Pelfrey say hey I like that I gave you the lead. Bloop strikes out third strikeout eight come to the plate but two big home runs especially. Bordeaux with a three run homer to tie the game. And then one out later, Arcia with his third homer of the series. Twins lead the White Sox 4 3 in the middle of the third.
To the mound, talking with Andre Rienzo in the dugout now after the Twins scored four runs to take a 4-3 to three lead. White Sox batting here in the third. Adam Dunn leading off. He walked his first time up. Looks at a breaking pitch inside ball one. Yeah, good uh, visit by Don Cooper. You know, Rienzo ended up getting the strikeout of Trevor Plouffe, but you can see the pitcher-catcher, pitching-coach relationship right there. You need that. I want to be told during the ball game if my pitching coach sees something that can make me better. You know, there, I know when I first came up, there were guys that would wait. Pitching coaches would wait till after the ball game, say, "Boy, you're really flying open." Well, tell me now. I want to know now why. You know that maybe I'm having some trouble getting some outs. Makes sense. Here's the one-one pitch and a slashing drive foul down the right field line. And count one and two to Dunn. He'll be followed by Paul Canerco and Garcia making his starting debut in a White Sox uniform. Slap to shortstop. Ormon makes the play and Dunn is retired. And right now let's go to Matt Vazgersian at the MLB Network Studios for a game break. Dodgers continue to roll Dick. They've won 35 of their last 43. Their contributions have been line up wide as in the case of Nick Punto singling in a pair trying to extend their lead over the Diamondbacks to six back to you and Burton. All right, Matt, thank you very much. Now, there's a guy right, Nick Punto, used to be a former twin, but, you know, he was one of the Perantas when uh, Ozzy Guillen was a manager here the, under Gardy's uh, tutelage back in the early 200 or 2000s. Abisail Garcia up for the second time, or he's on deck, actually. Paul Canerco, who drove in the first run for the White Sox with a sacrifice fly. Garcia. Who struck out is waiting to hit one out here in the third inning. Mike Pelfrey now with a one run lead and a big cut by Canerco fouls it off one and one. Yeah, both starters using a lot of pitches. Pelfrey right now 62 pitches trying to get the second out here in the third inning. 33 pitches in the first, 23 in the second. White Sox 43 and 71. 25 games out of first place and there's a base hit up the middle Canerco after knocking in a run singles here in the third inning and that is the third hit for the White Sox and Garcia coming to the plate Garcia struck out his first time We can see the shadows here starting to creep in over the field at U.S. Cellular Field. Always benefits the pitcher if you can get that hitter in the shade or yourself in the shade with that sun in the background. Tough to pick up the rotation of the baseball for that hitter. Fouled off for a strike. Pelfrey's last win came on July the 6th. When he pitched six scoreless innings against the Blue Jays, and that was in his return from two weeks on the DL with a back strain. Hey, he's had a frustrating year, but again, kind of a rehab year for Mike Pelfrey. I don't think the Twins expected him to go out and win 15 ball games like he did for the Mets in 2010. They're hoping that he could go deep into the ball game and give him, you know, six, seven innings. There's Plouffe goes to second for one, not in time at first. And Garcia beats the throw, so Kernerko is forced at second. There are two out, and Jordan Danks coming up for the White Sox. You saw the speed right there of Garcia, and that's one thing the White Sox, you know, they're, they're going to need more speed in their lineup, trading some of their players away like Rios. But uh, right here, almost a tailor-made double play if you're a pitcher. You know, one hopper to Plouffe, good feed over to Dozier, good strong throw, but Garcia just beat it out. So here is uh, Garcia. Well, Danks, excuse me, Jordan Danks, who homer to right field, a booming over 400 feet back to the mound. And the comebacker, Pelfrey, handles. And that'll do it. One hit and one left after three, a one run, Twins lead.
Sponsored by AT&T, helping you do what you do even better. AT&T, rethink possible. And by Fox Sports 1, America's new sports network, coming in just seven days. Well, Mike Pelfrey do it, it did exactly what you do when your team puts four runs on the board. Get them back into the dugout as quick as possible. Three outs on only ten pitches for Mike Pelfrey in that third inning. And here in the fourth for the Twins, Rienzo facing Clee Thomas, who popped to short his first time up. Thomas getting a chance to play every day now that the uh, Twins set down Aaron Hicks down to Triple A. Thomas first came to the big leagues with the Tigers in 2008, up and down a couple years. Came up a little bit with the Twins last year. Twins actually selected them off waivers back in 2012 in April from the Detroit Tigers. One thing Tom Bernanski, the hitting coach for the Twins in his first season, trying to cut down a swing a little bit of Thomas. He had that big swing, just make contact, utilize your speed. Hopefully get on base, but he takes a fastball right there for a call third strike. Fourth strikeout for Rin. Well, America's new sports network is coming in just seven days, and it all begins with an epic night of premieres beginning with UFC Fight Night as Shogun Hua takes on Shale Sonnen, followed by the news and highlight show fans have been waiting for. Fox Sports Live, it all begins next Saturday at 8 p.m. Eastern, only on Fox Sports 1. Rianzo picking up his fourth strikeout. And Formone lifts it out to the center fielder, Garcia, who makes the catch for the second out. Two out to Brian Dozier, the leadoff hitter. Well, he has played outstanding defense at second base. Only three errors for Brian Dozier on the year. Now, this is a guy that's a converted shortstop in his first season at second base. And he has shown great range to his left and his right. Foul ball down the left field line. He bounced to third and was hit by a pitch and scored a run. Well, uh, I came up as a shortstop. I played shortstop my whole entire career. Uh, my rookie year last year, I was the shortstop and then uh, made the transition to second base. And uh, the Twins twins harp a lot on, you know, making, making the routine plays, being a good defensive player. And he had a lot more to say, but uh, native of Tupelo, Mississippi, went to southern Mississippi and fouls it off. You know, we talked a little bit about, you know, Gillespie being a third baseman when you've got Bravo Ventura there. Now, Ron Gardenhire was a middle infielder for the New York Mets. And, you know, he takes a lot of pride in that middle part of the infield. So here's Brian Dozier, who signed basically as a shortstop, always a shortstop, now asked to move to second base. And he has really taken off with it. He's done a great job. And at the plate, he's done pretty well, too, especially in the extra base hit department. He's third on the club behind... Uh, Maurer and Morneau coming into this game. They each had 40. They have more now with 38 extra base hits. Yeah, Twins still looking for that leadoff hitter. You know, they put Aaron Hicks there. They put numerous players there in that leadoff spot. But right now, Brian Dozier is kind of running with it. You know, he's getting that opportunity. A lot of extra base hits as of late for Brian Dozier. 24 doubles on the year, four triples, 10 home runs. So... He's able to get on base and also drive in some runs. That's a fair ball down the left field line. And Brian Dozier on his way to second. And there's another extra base hit for Dozier. A two-out double. And hit number five for the Twins with Joe Maurer coming to the plate. You know, he came up last year, got his feet wet at the major league level, played in 84 ball games, hit only 234, but... You can see this young man just getting a lot of confidence at this level. Always a good minor league hitter, but can you do it here? And I think uh, what we've seen over the last month for Dozier, doing a lot better job. Chipper Jones' his favorite player growing up. Pretty good example right there. Atlanta Braves great. But here's Maurer with the Twins leading 4-3 and a runner in scoring position. Maurer bounced to second and singled. 
And he takes strike one from Andre Rienzo. Three time batting champ, Joe Maurer, won the American League batting title as a catcher. Now, this is a catcher back in 2006, 2008, and 9 when he was American League MVP in 2009. One and one. Joe Maurer uh, recently, a proud father of twins. Isn't it? Uh, it's, it's natural, isn't it? Joe Maurer. With the twins, with the has twins. Who has twins. Boy, it makes sense. That was Emily and Marin are their names. Born July the 24th. It's down low, and it's two and one to Maurer. The twins were trailing three to nothing. Going into the third inning, and then they went long ball, and that's been their story in this series. All of their runs have come as a result of homers. Justin Morneau with a three-run homer to tie it, and then Oswaldo Arcia putting them ahead four to three. They threaten here now with two out. Dangerous Mauer with 38 runs batted in. There's a strike. Rienzo trying to get out of it. So close games. In this series thus far between these teams, seven to five was the score in the first game yesterday, and three to two in ten innings in the nightcap. Lead by Dozier. And a full count with Maurer. With Morno on deck if Maurer can get aboard. Enzo retiring the first two hitters, the eight and nine batters in the twin order before Dozier double. A well, three two pitch right here. Resent Renzo has already walked two, and now he's walked three with a breaking ball. And runners at first and second. And this is a familiar sight. Just last inning for Morneau, who delivered with a booming home run that tied the game. So here he comes up after walking in the first inning. Three run homer. Now with 14 homers and 67 runs driven in. It just seems like when July 31st kind of passed, you know, Justin's name was mentioned for a couple, two, three weeks about maybe trade bait for the Twins. They weren't going to win the division. They may were. They're not going to go to postseason. Justin's a free agent at the end of the year, but it seemed like all of a sudden that calendar turned to August 1st. Justin relaxed, and now the home runs are coming in bunches. 0 oh and 1. It's funny how baseball, a lot of times you could have a bad month of April, for example, and then all of a sudden it becomes May 1st, and it's like, okay, new month. Now I'm okay. It's like playing the back nine. Yeah. Golf. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you have a bad front nine, okay, back nine is going to be better. 0 oh 1 pitch, grounded to Beckham, and that will do it. Two out double, two men are left for the Twins. And the White Sox come up in the bottom of the fourth, trailing four to three.
their debuts in this ballpark. Mike Pelfrey with a one run lead is allowed three runs on three hits and uh, taking a look at the Fox Sports One pitcher comparison presented by Fox Sports One. America's new sports network coming August the 17th. Yeah, Dick, the only thing, both starters really have a high pitch counts. Pelfrey, 66 pitches, only 10 in the third. That helped him. And Rienzo, 91 pitches in four innings. And in today's world, again, that pitch count, that doesn't mean that you're going to go too deep into the game. Here's Josh Fegley. Pitch taken for a ball one and one. He needed a spleen removal back in 2011 to battle the disease ITP. So uh, he has really made great strides since then. First round pick from Indiana back in 2009 from Terre Haute. Slow roller to shortstop. Bormo throws him out, and there's one gone in the fourth inning. Well, Fox Sports Supports is proud to partner with Johns Hopkins Medicine. Johns Hopkins is at the forefront of groundbreaking research into autoimmune disorders like multiple sclerosis and lupus. Join us in the fight against autoimmune disease. Donate now by visiting hopkinsmedicine.org slash Fox. Blake Ticotti. First career homer last night shows bunt and takes a strike as uh, the twins come in from the corners. Yeah, you mentioned uh, to Cody's first home run last night coming that coming off uh, Liam Hendricks, who was a 26 player, you know, with a double header baseball's done the right thing. You can call up an extra player and both the uh, White Sox and the twins needed that 26 player. Both of them started in uh, in game two and Hendricks. Cody. Yep, Hendricks for me. the Twins and Leesman for the White Sox. Now, to Cody is hit by a pitch, so each team has had a, a runner as a result of getting hit yeah, by a pitch. Looked like a slider that just kept uh, running in on uh, to Cody, and he's at first base with one out. And Gordon Beckham, who has scored two of the White Sox three runs with a walk in the first inning. Reached on a fielder's choice. Came around on the error by right fielder. Chris Colabello on the fly ball hit by Gillespie in the count 0-1 to Beckham. Keep an eye on uh, Takoti at first base. He has one stolen base in four attempts, but base runners like to run against Pelfrey. Eight successful in ten stolen bases. Remember Beckham had a great jump in the second inning. Lifts it in the air to right field. Colabello coming toward the line. Slides, but it's out of play. And avoided uh, crashing into the barrier there. So See, even though that, you know, you're not an offensive player, there's times you can work on your sliding. And that's what uh, Colabello did right there. He knew the ball was going to go into the stands, but he thought, you know what, I'm going to work on my sliding a little bit. So It'll Look good. I give him yeah. high grades for yeah, that. Very nice slide. 0-2 oh now. To Beckham with Takoti, the runner at first base. Tying run at first here in the fourth inning with one out. That just misses, and it's one and two. It's not only the new batting stance for Beckham, it's also when he does crouch down, he kind of picks up that left leg as a timing mechanism to see, get that ball toward home plate. See, so he stands straight up. That's the way he used to hit. Now, Jeff Manto, the pitching coach, just said, hey, you know, try to crouch down a little bit. See if it works for you. Boy, has it. Making more solid contact. There's Manto again, keeping an eye on uh, Beckham. And How about his assistant, Harold Baines? Yeah. What a hitter he was. Yes, he was. A guy that a lot of people feel should be in the Hall of Fame. Lays off the pitch breaking outside. Two balls and two strikes. We've had 14 home runs. There's Harold Baines, who is a gentleman and a professional. Yes, he is. He's a class man. Been uh, with Chicago his whole career. Now the assistant hitting coach for Jeff Manto. And they made a statue out of him. They bronzed him. 
and needs a little flexibility when that happens. But uh, I forgot Baines, quite an honor. Baines also played for a couple other clubs. I believe the Orioles, A's, and the A's. But he's known here in Chicago. Great hitter, great designated hitter. Two balls, two strikes. Missing inside. Pelfrey wanted that one, and the count is full. Pelfrey walked two batters in the first inning and one in the second. Well, he wanted really Beckham to swing at that ball because that might be a ground ball. 13 double plays behind the Mike Pelfrey so far this year. Gillespie on deck. Three and two will watch to Cody. To Cody takes off gets a good jump but it matters not ball four and Beckham walks for the second time and the fourth walk issued by Pelfrey and so the White Sox now have runners at first and second and one out and Connor Gillespie coming to the plate and a meeting at the mound with Joe Maurer and the hurler Pelfrey. So it's four to three tying runners in scoring position now. And again, all those walks, four so far, that's 16 pitches, you figure, and then there's other ones that gets that pitch count up. What do you think Harold Baines hit against you, if you had to take a guess? Because we know. 280, 290, maybe 300. Oh, come on. 247, you, you solved him, my friend. He had one home run against you. and How many at-bats? One? 73. Oh. Oh. He's a good hitter. You're not a Hall of Famer for nothing. I respected him. Here's Gillespie who flied to left. I respected anybody with a bat. <laughs> Gillespie, of course, got the. Even my wife. <laughs> That's too much information for us, <laughs> Mr. B. One and over the count to Connor Gillespie. Hit a fly ball that uh, was certainly catchable, and Colabello dropped it, allowing. The White Sox to get their third run, but since then the Twins have scored four times. 1 0 pitch, comebacker, and over to second for one, and a double play. 1 6 3. And that'll do it. So the White Sox retire to the fourth, and it remains 4 to 3, Twins. And ball hit back to you. You know who's covering in this situation. Mike Pelfrey got that ball back. He knows that floor Mona is covering second base. You give him a good feed, hopefully on the left field side. 
exactly what happened right there and then your second baseman or shortstop turn a double play and Florimone has done a good job seeing turning 75 double plays he and Brian Dozier very very good at turning double plays for the twins and yeah, that really pleases Ron Gardenhire to uh, uh, a great degree he of course was a, a shortstop himself an infielder so he respects that part of the game and Josh Willingham went around and the count no balls and two strikes Willingham has struck out twice today both on called third strikes Rianzo with four strikeouts in the ball game Willingham a couple times starting his fifth inning slice fair down the right field line Willingham chasing it in the corner is Danks and Willingham will get into second walking there with the double to start the fifth inning for the Twins. This ball looked like it completely fooled Willingham at the last second. He kind of put the barrel of bat down and hit right down that first baseline straight over the top fastball. And Josh, I don't think he knew that this ball was going to stay fair or not as he hesitated a little bit and said, oh, I better run. So a double for Willingham is 14th of the year starts the bottom of the fifth inning for the Twins. Excuse me, top of the fifth for the Twins. Here's Arcia who homered his last time up to give the Twins their four to three lead now knocking on the door for more. Four of the six hits for Minnesota have been extra base hits two home runs and two doubles. Well, you have a slow runner at second base. Arcia's goal right here is to try to get Willingham over to third if he makes an out. One and one as he fouls it off. Well, so far in this series, Arcia here in game one taking the home run the other way. Then in game two, straight away center. And then here, what we've seen already, he pulled the ball into right field. So does he have power to all fields? I'd have to say yes. Yes. And he also had a home run against the White Sox on June the 20th. And he fouls this off his foot. So he now really has home runs in his last four games versus the White Sox. And the last twin with four homers in four games was Bob Allison in wow. 1964. Big Bob Allison. Number Bob four. Allison. Number yeah. four. Number four. He'll be uh, known more for that catch in the World Series down that left field line. David Percy starts to warm up for the White Sox. Yeah, one of two left-handers for the White Sox in that bullpen. Count is one and two to Arcia. Willingham. Strike three. And the throw to first base. Put out made, so there's one down. Willingham, of course, stays at second. Well, good curveball right there by Rienzo, and, and really a bad swing by Arcia. Does not do his job by advancing Willingham over to third. Good tight rotation on this breaking ball. Arcia swinging through it, and good block. That's the fifth strikeout for Rienzo. And here is Chris Colabello, who's been on base twice, singled and walked. Wins up four to three. They've out hit the White Sox six to three. Each team has made an error. One and oh, the count to Colabello. Minnesota looking to make it three in a row. The leadoff double by Josh Willingham after striking out twice the first time up. Times up against Rienzo. Breaking pitch is high and it's 2 and 0. 100 pitches by the Brazilian Andre Rienzo, 25 year old, making his first home start. His major league start coming in Cleveland, then Detroit. Both those he pitched very well. Did not play organized. Baseball in Brazil in an organized league. He was drawn to a game because his mother played softball and his older brothers were baseball players. So it's all in the family. Mm -hmm. 101 pitches, a strike to ball ratio, not where a starter would like it to be. Ball four and not, not even close. 
So runners now at first and second. Remember, Percy's been warming up in the bullpen. That is the fourth walk issue. And Chevrolet, the official vehicle of Major League Baseball, celebrating a new season for new memories. And so for your chance to win a community field makeover in an all-new 2014 Impala, visit ChevyBaseball.com. And Robin Ventura's come out to the mound, and that will be all for Andre oh, Rian. That's, uh, that's Don that Cooper? Cooper. Yeah, oh, excuse Cooper, me. Excuse Cooper me. coming out just to kind of give Percy, I think, a little more time out on that bullpen. Now, he said the magic words when he came out in the third inning because uh, Rienzo ended up striking out Trevor Plouffe. It's always a good visit when the pitching coach can get, you know, say the right thing and then uh, the pitcher get out of the situation. Yeah. And, of course, Plouffe, the right-handed hitter, and Cleet Thomas, the on-deck hitter, is a left-handed batter. And so Percy would likely come in to face the lefty. There's Robin Ventura, sans jacket. See, even though Don Cooper, you try to stay in this little bubble that baseball has. Cooper's one of these pitching coaches that will let that starter go a little bit deeper. They'll let a hundred, you know, guy like Chris Sale. You got to know your starters as you see him get off the phone right there. Make sure that Percy's ready to come in. But he'll let a starter go 110 to 120 pitches. And a ground ball made to order double play. Now, was that a good visit or not? If, it, if that's all it took, we all would be doing it. Middle of the fifth. It's still 4-3 to three, Minnesota. Cooper came out one pitch later. Rienzo able to get the ground ball double play. And I wonder why the pitching coach just doesn't, you know, why didn't Don Cooper just stay behind the mound? You know, what the heck? But Rienzo getting that big double play. And again, another conversation between, you know, the pitching coach, the catcher, the pitcher. Rienzo, five innings, 103 pitches. White Sox trailing by a run, batting here in the fifth inning against. Mike Pelfrey, Alexi Ramirez, Adam Dunn, and Paul Konerko, the heart of the Chicago order. And there is breaking ball in for a strike. Pelfrey has thrown now 80 pitches in the game, but he dispatched the White Sox with 10 pitches in the third and 13 in the fourth. So he has settled down. Let's see if it continues. Ramirez, one for two with a double, his first at bat. Goes after that one and it's 0 and 2. Yeah, good breaking ball down and away after a little cut fastball to get strike one. He goes to the curveball. Good location at last pitch. Now he's ahead in the count, 0 and 2. 
Belfry at 81 pitches. One strikeout and make it two strikeouts for Pelfrey. Today's telecast presented by Budweiser is sponsored by Chevrolet. Find new road. Adam Dunn has walked and bounced out to shortstop. You know, Dick, we talked a little bit about the, uh, the, you know, the defense of the Twins. Well, they need good defense because they have a starting staff that doesn't strike out a lot of batters. They've actually, the uh, starters for the Twins have struck out the least amount of batters of any staff in Major League Baseball. So you need good defense behind you. Palfrey with a couple strikeouts, 65 strikeouts, now in 108 innings pitch. Two and one to Adam Dunn. Sure, there are not too many staffs that can say that the relievers have more strikeouts than the starters, and that's exactly what's going on in Minnesota. Well, a paltry amount of quality starts. 44 has been the number coming yeah. into this game for the Twins. Samuel Daduno has been a nice a surprise. He says that the WBC really helped him. And Rienzo, you know, he pitched for uh, Team Brazil, and he also credits the WBC for for his success and a little extra exposure. Fly ball left field, and Dunn just missed that one, and Arcia makes the catch for the second out. Well, time for the player profile, brought to you by AT&T, helping you do what you do even better. AT&T. Rethink possible and look at those names. Luke Appling, these are great players who donned the White Sox uniform. Canerco is second to Luke Appling, Nellie Fox, and Frank Thomas. The top four. He's had a great career for the Chicago White Sox. Again, 15 seasons wearing the Chicago White Sox uniform. The average down again. You wonder how long. A Paul Konerko is going to continue to play this ball game. His back has been a, an issue for him over the last couple years. Returned from the disabled list July 22nd after spending just about the entire month on the DL with a lower back strain. He's knocked in a run with a sacrifice fly in the first inning and then singled. So he's one for one officially in the game has 40 runs batted in on the year White Sox scored a run in the first on the sack fly Jordan Danks led off with a home run and then an error in the outfield allowed Chicago to take a three nothing lead and then the twins exploded for four in the third on a three run homer by Morno and Arcia's solo drive his third homer of the series Florimo throws out Canerco and a nifty one two three inning for Pelfrey, only 11 pitches. Boy, he's really settled down in that department. Last three.
by the makers of One A Day Men's, the official multivitamin of MLB. And by T-Mobile, now your choice is simple. T-Mobile, unleash. Sixth inning, and the Twins will have the eight, nine, and leadoff hitters facing Andre Rienzo comes out once more. Thomas has popped the short and called out on strikes. Fly ball hit deep to right center field, and it's going to go off the wall. Extra bases, and stopping at second base is Thomas. So the Twins, for the second straight inning, have the leadoff runner on at second with a double. Remember last inning, Rienzo was getting near 100 pitches, and, and again, that bubble. But Don Cooper, a guy that uh, will let that starter go a little bit deeper, especially with their bullpen, you know, losing some arms out there like Crane and Thornton. But uh, right there, Thomas got a high fastball on the first pitch, hits his 10th double of the year, gets in the scoring position, nobody out. Here's Florimone, third baseman Gillespie playing on the infield grass. At third, shows bunt, the pitch is high and away. So, Kernerko and Gillespie looking for the sacrifice as Florman checks with Joe Vavra, the third base coach. Four to three to score, the Twins lead here in the sixth inning. Well, we did not see Arcia advance Willingham last inning. See how the Twins try to advance them here. Good, Good bunt. bunt. Deadens it, and Pelfrey's throw in time, but. Sacrifice moves Thomas over to third base. That was perfectly executed by the shortstop. Well, when you hit in the lower part of that lineup, you better know how to punt, and it's a good sacrifice right there. Squaring around, giving yourself up, deadening the ball right there, and Florimone doing his job, getting high fives all around. So one out, runner at third base, and the White Sox bring their infield in as Brian Dozier comes up. Double his last time to the plate. He is one for two, also hit by a pitch, and has scored a run. And the first pitch in tight, ball one. David Percy, the left-hander who was up last inning, continues to throw in the White Sox pen. Yeah, Dozier tied with uh, Ryan Domit for second in the, uh, with the Twins as far as runs batted in. Ryan Domit currently on the seven-day disabled list or, or concussion list. Justin Morneau leading the Twins in runs batted in. With 67. Dozier and Dozier, excuse me, Domit with 44 apiece. 3-0 the count to Dozier with Joe Maurer. On deck, one out here, so another opportunity for the Twins. There is Maurer, who has been on twice today. And a call strike, three balls and one strike. In his first two starts, Rienzo worked seven innings against the Indians and six against the Tigers. See, since July 1st, Dozier leading with 18 doubles. This is a high fastball, and the count is full. You're always a better hitter when that infield is in because it cuts down the range of that infielder. You can see the White Sox trying to cut the runner off at home. And number two, usually a curveball, and he misses with it. Ball four, runners at the corners now, and Joe Maurer coming up with runners. At first and third, that is the fifth walk issued by Rienzo in this game. And that will be all as Ventura comes to the mound. And with Maurer and Morno coming up, two lefties, the southpaw will be making his entrance into the game, David Percy. And that'll be all for Andre Rienzo, who works five and a third. And the Twins leading 4-3. He's responsible for the runners on base.
responsible for the runners at first and third. And the new pitcher for the White Sox, as you look at the numbers right now, it's four runs, is David Percy, the 31 year old lefty from the Dallas area. And he was uh, touched for a home run by Arcia in the first game last night into the streak of seven scoreless appearances and be facing Joe Maurer. Yeah, Percy, uh, you know, the other night he pitched and he didn't give up that home run to RCA. He started the season down at AAA Charlotte, called up on July 3rd in his first season with the Chicago White Sox. And the first pitch taken down low, ball one. Maurer is one for two, has single score to run and walk his last time. Twins lead it four to three. They've out hit the White Sox seven to three. And here in the sixth inning, looking to expand their lead with Justin Morneau waiting on deck. Twins have the hitters to do that with right here. Well, you play the percentages with Maurer at the plate, but I mean he hits righties or lefties. It doesn't matter. He's hitting 308 against lefties, 319 against righties coming into this ball game. Percy with a fastball, curveball, and a changeup. Also pitched for the Blue Jays, the Oakland A's, the Detroit Tigers last year in the minor leagues of the Philadelphia Phillies organization. Thomas at third, Dozier at first. By the way, Maurer is two for five lifetime against Percy. And check the swing, but it catches the outside corner. And the count one ball and two strikes. The paid attendance here at U.S. Cellular Field 24,529. Well, White Sox lost two ball games yesterday. Why? A lot of home runs allowed and the walks. 20 walks allowed by the staff so far in, tw in 24 to third innings. Those are free bases. One two pitch. And Maurer goes down. Big strikeout by Percy. With less than two out and a runner at third base. So Maurer is retired. Two down and Morno coming to the plate. What a series for Justin. Well, the grand slam coming here in game one in a four run inning for the Twins that took the lead. And then his next at bat in the ninth inning, a solo home run. And here this afternoon, a big three run home run for Justin Morno in the four run third inning. Has also walked. And bounced out. Now with 14 homers, 67 runs batted in. Two down, Thomas at third, and Dozier at first, and a comebacker. And David Percy comes in and does the job. He gets two dangerous hitters in Maurer and Morneau, and it remains a 4 to 3 Minnesota lead into the bottom of the sixth.
Dodgers and Rays. A 6-0 deficit was overcome last night in the opener for the Dodgers to win. They've got a 5-0 lead after this A.J. Ellis sack fly, but it got interesting here. Watch what happened after runners moved up. James Loney to Yanel Escobar to Evan Longoria, where Juan Uribe is tagged out on a variation of the hidden ball trick. Burt Blylevin right after your own heart. Back to Dick and Bert in Chicago. <laughs> One of the great tricks wow. of the game. I rarely execute. I think the only time I ever saw that is Steve Lomberdozzi, former second baseman for the Twins, did that on a base runner. And the thing is, as a pitcher, you cannot be on the dirt area. You have to be on the grass for that to work. But once Uribe took a step off the bag, the old hidden ball trick, Longoria just tagged him. And uh, alertness by the umpire, too, that to know that Longoria had the ball. Here's Garcia leading off. Big cut and a miss. And strike one. Garcia has struck out and reached on a fielder's choice. Abisail Garcia making his first start. 22-year-old, 6'4", 240 pounds. Came from the Tiger Farm system. And there's a base hit to center field. So Garcia with his first hit in a White Sox uniform. Remember, he played 53 games for the Detroit Tigers. Coming up last year. So the leadoff hitter for the White Sox is aboard and the tying run at first and Jordan Tanks coming up. Well fastball middle in and he just got the barrel of a bat out quickly. And they say Garcia doesn't have the power yet. Again he's just a young man at 22 years old that say Miguel Cabrera has and it, I don't know if he ever will but good hitting right there by the 22 year old. And here's Jordan Tanks. Talk about good hitting. Big home run in the second inning, leading off that frame. One point, the White Sox led three to nothing, only to trail four three, and here was his home run. Yeah, got a fastball up from Pelfrey, and uh, Danks hitting his second home run. That gave the uh, White Sox a two to nothing lead at the time. And the hit by Garcia here in the sixth, their first hit since Canerco with a base hit up the middle in the third. So Pelfrey had settled down nicely. There's a check swing foul by Danks. Pelfrey has really handled the pitch count the last three innings. In the third, fourth, and fifth, through just 10, 13, and 11 pitches. That's 34 on my California well, map. You know. After using 56 pitches the first two innings. And that's why they call you the math wizard. <laughs> that was quick. Two strikes to Danks with Begley on deck. It's the only subject I liked. It's the only subject a teacher liked me, too. One ball and two Have strikes. Have you ever been requested out of a class? No. This I'm, is high school. I didn't go to college. Is that the same as being a, called out of a class? Well, a teacher <laughs> requested me to leave. It's not a good thing. Anthony Swarzak warming up for the Twins. It only happened in four classes. But, but really, Bert, how did things work out for you? <laughs> they turned out okay. I know my math. Here's Pelfrey's 1-2 pitch. Check swing outside. And it's 2-2 two and two to Jordan Danks. So the tying run at first base for the White Sox here in the sixth inning. Danks, who already has a home run. Seventh in the order today for the White Sox. Well, Pelfrey trying to get through the sixth inning. Only one time this year he has gone seven innings. So, you know what? I can't. I said coming into the ball game, they'd like more innings out of Pelfrey, but because of the 56 pitches in the first two innings, yes, he settled down, but he need to uh, hopefully go over six innings. This bullpen for the Twins, they yeah, got some great arms out there, but they have been yes. overworked. Yes. Three and two now to Danks. White Sox trailing by a run, and they. have been on the short end against Ron Gardenhire's team. Minnesota has taken seven of the first nine against the Chicagoans. Well, Pelfrey already with four walks, a season high for Mike Pelfrey. And the payoff pitch coming up. And a big pitch it is in this one run game. And it's down low ball four. And the White Sox start the sixth inning, getting two runners aboard. And Fegley coming to the plate. And Gardenhire has come out now. 
Anthony Swarzik well, has been throwing. And uh, I said he averages five innings. What inning is it? Six. But nobody out. So Pelfrey leaves. And Pelfrey leaves the game with a 4 3 lead. And Swarzak will come in when we return. Leaf here of Mike Pelfrey. Pelfrey looking for his fifth win. Leaves with the score four to three in his favor. And Swarzak has not pitched since last Saturday against the Astros. 34th appearance of the year. Yeah, nobody's pitched more innings than Anthony Swarzak out of the bullpen in the American League. He has been a guy that Ron Garden hire Rick Anderson has have wanted to pitch three or four innings at a time. First and second, Josh Fegley. Showing bunt and the pitch is up high ball one So an opportunity here for the White Sox trailing four to three here in the bottom of the sixth inning Swarzak his fourth season with the twins 27 year old right-hander Out of the Fort Lauderdale, Florida area Joe's bunt takes the strike. Blake Dakota on deck, the number nine man for the White Sox. Well, you can see in, in Major League Baseball leaders, uh, nobody's pitched more innings out of that bullpen than Swarzak. 70 and two thirds innings. Morneau. Getting ready to come in for the bunt attempt. It goes to third base, however, and Plouffe's only play is to Dozier covering it first. Sacrifice successful by Begley, the White Sox catcher, and now runners move up to second and third. Tying runners at third in Garcia, and Jordan Danks at second in the one-run game, and Blake to Cody coming to the plate. Begley laid down the perfect butt because why? Because you want that third baseman, that being Trevor Blue, to come in and feel the ball. That leaves third base open, so Garcia could basically walk to third base. So nice sacrifice butt right there, advancing the runners. Well, Begley had never faced Swarzak before, and neither has to Cody. Who has fouled out and was hit by a pitch. And on deck, Gordon Beckham, the top of the order, one out here for the White Sox sixth inning. 
Not had any scoring since the third inning. Pitch inside ball one. Well, if you're a pitcher in this situation, what you're looking for is a strikeout. Swarzak, 50 strikeouts in 70 and two-thirds innings. His last outing last Saturday against the Houston Astros, he did strike out five in three innings in relief. That was a season high. Swing and a miss, one and one now to Tacody. There you see the twins and how effective their bullpen has been. It, it is unbelievable with uh, what the twins are able to maintain that ERA with the short starts of the starters. Only the Toronto Blue Jays have pitched more innings out of their bullpen than the twins. Two and one now. Toronto Blue Jays coming into today's play. Their bullpen has worked 406 and two thirds innings. Twins bullpen 400 and two thirds innings. So only six more innings out of that Blue Jay bullpen. And you look at the White Sox bullpen. They have a good starting staff. They got a lot of young guys, but their bullpens worked only 328 innings coming into this game here today. You saw Beckham on deck. Ramon Troncoso is now throwing for the White Sox. Two balls in a strike. And a fly ball hit to right center field. 1 1 will score for sure. Catch made by Thomas and scoring is Garcia. Danks goes to third. It's 4 4. Two out, but the White Sox have the go ahead run at third and an RBI for Tacody. Well, Tacody gets the RBI, but Badley is the one that. Got the runners over to create the second run created by the White Sox on a sacrifice fly. Conurco knocked in a run on the sacrifice fly in the first inning. So there are two down to Gordon Beckham. And Beckham, who has walked twice and scored two runs, looking to put the White Sox in front here in the sixth inning. That run charged to Pelfrey. One and zero oh, pitch outside to Gordon Beckham. Way out in front of that one, and it's one and one. Fourteen home runs have been slugged by both of these teams. In this series thus far, nine off the bats of the Twins, five for the White Sox. Lead by Danks. Taken for a ball, two and one. Yeah, Swarzak, a lot of uh, Twins personnel thought that Swarzak would be a starting pitcher. He did, has made some starts, but so far in his young career, this is where he's really excelled. As a long man out of that bullpen. 34th appearance for Swarzak. Trying to pitch out of this one now. After the White Sox have tied the game. And now falling behind 3 and 1 to Beckham with Connor Gillespie waiting to hit. So while the Twins have gone long ball, the White Sox have hit a home run, but they got a run on an error. Couple of sacrifice flies as well. Here's the 3 1. Ball four, and Beckham is aboard. Walking for the third time today. Runners now at first and third and two out, and Connor Gillespie coming up. Make Sunday extra special by going out to the ballpark. Go to MLB.com slash Sunday to find special ticket offers. So here's Gillespie who has flied out and uh, reached on the error by Colabello that got a run in and then bounced into a double play started by Pelfrey.
There's a strike. You know, Dick, not saying that that mound out here is tilted a little bit, but we already showed that, you know, the White Sox staff, they will have walked 20 in two plus games. And the twin staff, they've walked 11. So 31 walks in two plus games. It's a lot of free passes. That's the ebb and flow you get during the course of a marathon season, just as the twins home run power in August mm -hmm. is. Unlike what they had in July and the rest of the season. One is at first and third, two out. 0 oh and 1 to Gillespie in a line drive to left field. Coming on in, and the ball is trapped. Run scores. White Sox lead. And going to third is Beckham. Connor Gillespie with an RBI single, and Arcia coming in trying to make the grab. Could not handle it. And an RBI for Gillespie, his. 27th of the year and the White Sox with two here in the sixth take the lead Good piece of hitting by Gillespie just taking that ball the other way Arcia coming in now you can see by the shadow of Arcia He's fighting that Sun on this line drive that kept sinking and then he dove for the ball He takes part of the turf out right there as his left knee kind of gave into the turf My goodness replace your divot but it's a RBI single for Gillespie, and it's a five to four Sox lead. And both of the runs charged to Mike Pelfrey. Breaking ball, and Alexi Ramirez swings and misses strike one. He doubled in the first inning and has been retired the last two times up. So Pelfrey left with the lead and now finds himself on the short end of the 5 4 game. Hits are seven to five in favor of the Twins. And runners at the corners, first and third. Beckham is at third. Gillespie at first. And now 0 and 2 to Alexi Ramirez. Troncoso continues to throw in the Chicago bullpen. And now it's Jones warming up in the bullpen. Yeah, Nate Jones uh, as Tocoso sat down. Nate Jones getting up. Fly ball hit to left field. And losing the ball in the sun, but making the catch was Arcia. And I'm amazed he was able to catch up with this one. That looked like he had lost it totally. But the White Sox get two. And after six have taken the lead. Wow. Five to four.
Ball is presented by Budweiser. Dick Stockton along with Burt Blylevin here at U.S. Cellular Field in Chicago and the White Sox leading by a score of five to four now. And Connor Gillespie who knocked in the go-ahead run. And uh, the line on Mike Pelfrey, five in the third innings, four hits, five runs, four earned, five walks, two strikeouts. And here's Josh Willingham with the count one and zero. Oh. Willingham doubled to the opposite field his last time up after striking out his first two times. Well, one reason the score is where it's at right now with the White Sox up one run is the job that David Percy did last inning with runners at first and third, able to strike out Maurer and then retired Morneau on a comebacker to himself. Goes after the outside pitch, chases it for strike two, one and two. Percy came in with runners at first and third, struck out Maurer and got Porno on a comebacker. Yeah. That's huge in a you know one run ball game and then the Sox came back and went ahead 5 4. So the pivotal sixth inning in this game. Willingham takes down low two and two. He'll be followed by Oswaldo Arcia and Chris Calabello here in this seventh inning. So timely hitting by the White Sox. And as Bert mentioned, the great sacrifice by Fegley setting it all up. Yep. Those are the little things you have to do to try to win a ball game. Full count now to Willingham. That's why there's no I in team. You think? Yeah. You're right. Three and two to Josh Willingham, the DH today for Ron Gardenhire. And he strikes out, foul tipped into the glove of Begley. So there's one going right now. Let's go to Matt Vasgersian at the MLB Network Studios for a game break. Dick, it's often said how much Chris Davis looks like Lou Ferrigno facially. You know, the Incredible Hulk. I think Davis might be stronger. Get a load of this one. His major league leading 42nd of the year puts the Birds back just a run in San Francisco. Back to you and Bird. Thank you. 42 home runs, Matt. And Cabrera hit his 35th today in the Tigers' win over the Yankees. What an incredible year that Chris Davis has uh, put together. You know, it started last year. Came over from the Texas Rangers, got a chance to play every day, and wow, he is he having a heck of a year. Orioles still trying to stay in that, uh, you know, Eastern Division. Boston leading, then Tampa and Baltimore right there. And they are. Arcia. As the count two balls and no strikes in his favor the Orioles coming in today four and a half behind the Red Sox only three down in the loss column. So right now you know you look at the Yankees now ten behind or actually ten and a half with their loss to Detroit today. And the Orioles a very good team talking with Joe Madden many times during the year he's been impressed with this Oriole club he says they'll be there all the way. 2 0 pitch down low and it's three and 0 to Arcia. With Calabello on deck. So the Twins looking to get the tying run aboard here in the seventh inning against David Percy, who has struck out two of the three batters he's faced. Well, it was Arcia that hit a home run off of Percy here in game one in the eighth inning, a solo home run. Looked like he was going for the downs on that one. Got the green light on 3 0. Oh. RC has hit two home runs this season off of left handed pitchers one being John Danks the other one being Percy. Again the fastball and challenging Arcia who swings and misses three and two now. A good fastball right there by David Percy. Percy came up with the Blue Jays back in 2008. I fly ball to left field. Let's see how Tacody handles the sun, and it's off the wall. Extra base hit, rounding second, and going back there is Arcia. 
Boy, that left field is an incredibly tough sun field right now. And obviously it was for Arcia himself, but he's at second with a one-out double here in the seventh. I was going to say, Arcia just, you know, kind of put his glove out to end the, uh, the you know, last inning. And see, he knows how tough it is. So what's he do? Catches up to that third high fastball. And he knows that there's going to be trouble out there. And that ball hitting off the wall. And Robin Ventura. Uh, ever saw that ball. Yeah, I don't, I don't know, but he made it look a little better. <laughs> and that'll be all as Nate Jones will come in for David Percy here in the seventh. He did, and the White Sox, all nine of their batters in the lineup have reached base. And uh, Morneau and Arcia each have hit the third home run of the series. And we have had long ball galore for both teams, really. Here's Chris Colabello. And he fouls off the first pitch from Nate Jones, who's making his 50th appearance of the season. 27-year-old from Northern Kentucky. And he was touched for Morno's game one seventh inning grand slam yesterday. A hard throwing right hander. 64 strikeouts in 58 innings pitch for Jones. Percy worked an inning in a third, allowed two hits, responsible for the tying run at second, Arcia. And swing and a miss. Strike two now to Calabello. And that's what Jones will do. He's been clocked as high as 100 miles an hour, come straight over the top and come right at you. Also, a very good curveball, you know, add a little slider and a changeup in his second season with the White Sox. You would know good curveballs. That was your stock and trade, got you into the Hall of Fame. Not just that's, that. There's a breaking ball right there, <laughs> that, that just throws Pilabello. Strikeout. Second out of the inning. Arcia at second remains the tying run and Trevor Plouffe, who was 0 for 3 coming to the plate. Well, key to do is get ahead in the count and then you can work in your other pitches. Now that's almost like, you know, it doesn't have the big curve, but just a spinner that Colabello well, completely fooled. Last time up, Plouffe bounced into a double play. To end the threat, there's a breaking ball strike on the inside corner. I mentioned uh, when Jones came in the other day, he's kind of like the Statue of Liberty with his arm, the way that he comes about, just kind of raises his arm up and then just lets it fly. 
Six foot five, about 185. Jones had an 8 0 record last year, best ever by a rookie reliever in White Sox history. Another good record. And now jumps ahead of Plufo in two. Yeah, Jones last year, 65 relief appearances, 8 0, 2.39 earned run average. Not a bad rookie season. Alves back remains 0 and 2. Of course, the Twins. Three strikeouts in the last five hitters, and of course uh, they know about striking out, don't they, in recent games? We just showed you with runners in scoring position, you know, and the thing is that, you know, both these clubs are where they're at because they've been really unsuccessful throughout the season in situations like this, especially late in a ball game, getting that big hit. Reaching out, fouling it off to the left. Twins at 16. Hitters strike out in one game. In a nine inning game and 19 in an extra inning affair against Seattle. They have struck out eight times in this game against three pitchers. Yeah, in game one, they struck out 15 times. Yesterday, they struck out 10 times. Jones ahead, 0 and 2, and he gets Ploof. So. White Sox pitchers strike out the side. The tying run, Arcia, is left at second. Paul Canerco will be up after Adam Dunn as we go to the last of the seventh. Five to four, White Sox. telecast is sponsored by MasterCard, proud supporter of Stand Up to Cancer, and by AT&T, helping you do what you do even better. AT&T, rethink possible. Well, there the scoring story. White Sox had a 3-0 lead. Minnesota with two home runs burst in front 4-3 and remained that way until the White Sox scored two in the bottom of the sixth. Here they are in the seventh against Anthony Swarzak. And Adam Dunn will start it off, followed by Paul Canerco. And Garcia. And the first pitch is a ball to Dunn, who is 0 for 2, walked in the first inning. Yeah, Dunn, a two-time All-Star, once with the Cincinnati Reds. You have to go back to 2002, and then last year with the White Sox. Could be extra bases into the corner. Chasing it is 
Colabello and Adam Dunn will have an easy double. And that is the third extra base hit for the White Sox. And so possible insurance run in scoring position here in the seventh. Yeah, breaking ball left up and Dunn with so much power. That ball didn't take long to get out to that right field corner. So Dunn with a double, only his 12th of the year to go with his 26 strike uh, home runs. And you know, uh, you know he just didn't just play baseball at close to 5,000 yards as a quarterback in Texas. New County High in high school in Texas. And there you see the numbers for Adam Dunn. I know they grow him big in Texas, but he's the quarterback at six foot six, 285. Well, they're getting bigger now. You look at Cam Newton. I'd like to know what his line was. For the Carolina Panthers, probably smaller in high school. <laughs> Here's Paul Konerko, one for two with a single sacrifice fly, knocked in. The first Chicago run in the first inning, and he takes strike one. I don't think Adam Dunn was ever small. No. <laughs> That's a big no. man. You see some of the little leaguers we've been watching earlier oh. in the game today. I mean, a 12 year old was uh, six foot uh, tall already. Yeah, and the pitcher, and the, <laughs> he hit a home run that went as far as uh, Jordan Danks, 400 foot <laughs> over earlier. And there's a base hit to right field. Holding at third base will be Konerko. Or done, and Konerko is on with his second hit of the game. And the White Sox, with nobody out, have runners at first and third. You know, that's one thing about Paul Konerko. You know, his job was to try to get done over, and this is why this guy has over 400 home runs. A career 280 hitter, because he knew what his job was, and what did he do? He rewarded himself with a base hit and advance done over. Good piece of hitting right there by Conerco. Yeah, no, Truly a, a professional. Yeah, no question about it. And uh, they get the veterans starting off this inning. And uh, Visail Garcia coming to the plate. And Rick Anderson coming to the mound for the conference. First and third, nobody out. And the White Sox looking to possibly break open this game, leading 5-4. to four. Now, twice we saw the White Sox pitching coach Don Cooper come out, and when he made the visit, good things happened. The strikeout of Ploof in the, in the uh, third inning, and then the double play ball off the bat of Ploof in the fifth inning. See if Rick Anderson has that same type of man magic. Caleb Thielbar, left-hander, warming up in the bullpen. Along with Ryan Presley. Here's Garcia singled his last time up, his first hit in a White Sox uniform. He's one for three today. Adam Dunn at third. Paul Konerko, the runner at first. Nobody out. Strike one. He's got a chance here to pick up his first RBI as a Chicago White Sox. He has 10, all of those coming with the Detroit Tigers coming into the ball game. There you see Dunn at third. Joe McEwing, third base coach. Out of play. And it's 0-2, so Swarzak is ahead of Garcia here. You know, at Dunn at third base, the Twins bring their infield kind of halfway because of Dunn's lack of speed, say. They don't have to come in on the grass, and that uh, helps a little bit with their range. Neil Barr, as you mentioned out there, now we're joined by Ryan Presley, the right-hander. Well-placed ground ball or a fly ball to get an insurance run home. Garcia reaches out, chases a ball out of the strike zone. Still 0-2, trying to protect the plate here. Jordan Tanks waiting to hit for the White Sox. Anthony Swarzak in relief of Mike Pelfrey. Here's Danks who has a home run today. Well, the White Sox this afternoon already have scored two runs on sacrifice flies. And I'm sure that's what Garcia would like to do if he cannot get a base hit, get the ball to the outfield. Strike on the outside corner, and Garcia goes down. Terrific pitch by Swarzak on the corner. And that'll be the first out. And Ron Gardenhire going to the mound with Danks coming up. Well, Rick Anderson went out there, and Swarzak re 
responded by striking out Garcia. And he's got the lefty field bar ready to come in now. So with one out now, runners at the corners. We'll take a break. We'll be back to Chicago in just a moment. New Sports Network, Fox Sports 1, and it all kicks off with an epic battle between Shogun Hua and Shale Sonnen on UFC Fight Night. Live coverage begins next Saturday at 8 p.m. Eastern, only on America's new sports network, Fox Sports 1. Anthony Swarzak coming in out of the ball game with the uh... It was Danks who was scheduled to hit, but that brings in Caleb Fieldbar, and what a rookie season he's having. And Jeff Kepinger will pitch hit yep. for Danks. So Fieldbar, as you mentioned, making his 31st appearance, an 0.90 earned run average. And here's Kepinger, who's one for four with two RBIs as a pitch hitter this year. Runners at first and third and one out. White Sox. Looking for at least an insurance run here in the bottom of the seventh inning. First pitch down low, ball one. Well, what the White Sox get out of Kepinger is a guy that signed a three year contract, had a great year last year with the Tampa Bay Rays when he hit 325, but a guy that doesn't strike out much. He doesn't walk much. Only 14 walks, 32 strikeouts in 343 appearances. So he makes contact, which, yes, he does. which is what the White Sox want. Takes inside. And it's two balls and no strikes. And a career average of 320 against Southpaws. But he's got a tough one there, Ron Gardenhire. Going with Field Bar here, the 26 year old from Richmond, Minnesota. Two thirds scoreless innings in the second game of last night's doubleheader. Two 0 pitch in the air. Shallow right field. Colabello making the catch and not coming in will be Adam Dunn. Too shallow in right field for Dunn, who is not a speedster to say the leap to try. And so big out for Thielbar getting Keppinger for the second out. Yeah, big out for the Twins right there. Uh, you know, Keppinger trying to hit that ball deep enough, but the ball did not go deep enough. So still runners at first and third. And Ron Gardenhire is coming out. To bring in a right hander, I'm sure. Yes. As we saw Ryan Presley warming up. Yep, with uh, Josh Fegley, right handed hitter coming up. And that'll be all. And so another pitching move made by Ron Gardenhire. Ryan Presley coming in and will return in a moment.
<laughs> Very nice. <laughs> we'll try that after the game too. We'll go down on the field and do that. Not only stand on our head, but we'll do somersaults. Well, Ryan Presley coming into the ball game, and both yeah. managers are their minds are turning in this inning. And a pinch hitter, Diaz yeah. has come up now, bat batting for Begley. Yeah. So. Now White Sox trying to add a run. Twins, uh, you know, they're trying to keep uh, this game at a one-run deficit for Presley. Diaz right. hitting 275, 13 homers, and 48 runs batted in. Usually a leadoff hitter and good power for a leadoff hitter. Runners at first and third. And slices it out of play. So the White Sox had a couple of opportunities to get a run home with less than two out, and they could not. Kepinger, the pinch hitter, fly to right after Garcia struck out. And so it's Presley who actually uh, coming off a appearance he would like to forget. Seven runs in an inning and a third in his last showing Monday at Kansas City. Would like to put the fire out here. And get Diaz for the final out of the inning. Slices it out of play and is ahead one ball and two strikes. Yeah, being a former pitcher, I didn't want to bring up that where he gave up seven runs. That uh, that was not a out good outing. Probably the worst outing, of course, in his young career. Presley, only 24 years old, like Theobar, you know, a rookie. He's a Rule 5 draft pick by the Twins out of the Boston Red Sox organization. Back on in December, made the club out of spring training. One ball, two strikes with two out runners at the corners. And staying alive is Diazza. And Diazza one for two as a pinch hitter. Already has a career high 13 home runs at nine last year. So the White Sox pinning their hopes. Didn't get anything out of Kepinger with one out and the runner at third. Now going for Diazza here with two out. Uh, Presley curveball fastball. There's a fast look like a slider down and in. Joe Maurer did a good job of blocking that ball. As you see the outfield kind of shading him a little bit to left field, anticipating maybe Diaz not catching up to that fastball. Five to four, the White Sox in front. They had a three-nothing lead at one point, and the Twins scored four in the third. It remained that way till the White Sox scored two in the last of the sixth. They're looking for a little breathing room here in the seventh. Two out, two and two, first and third. Did he go around? He did. And that'll be strike three as the third base umpire, Mark Carlson, indicates he went around. And the White Sox miss an opportunity here and still have the one run lead.
Saturday baseball is presented by Budweiser. And the Twins getting out of the threat. Fleet Thomas leading off, and there are changes in the field for the White Sox. Tyler Flowers has replaced Fegley behind the plate. Left field is Diaza. To Cody moves to center field. And Garcia moves from center to right. And the pitch is fouled off by Thomas, who doubled his last time up. One for three in the game. We're in the eighth inning, and the White Sox still lead by a run. Yeah, a couple things right there. Rob Ventura really tried to add a run right there. He pretty much depleted his bench. The only one on the on the bench right now is DC Ado, and he was in the original lineup, but has trouble still with that sore left thumb. So he may be unavailable. Where the Twins, I think what we saw is that the reason the Twins have such a good bullpen, they've been able to do exactly what they did that inning, have three different relievers come in and do their job. As Swarzak started the inning, but Theobar and Presley able to make some quality pitches and put the zero on the board. Well, for these teams, it's the exact opposite on the mound because the Twins have struggled with their starters. Their relievers have been impeccable. Meanwhile, the White Sox starters are third in the league with a 3.82, but their relievers have struggled. They're down 12 it over four but Jones struck out two to end the seventh inning and now has run the count full to Thomas with Formon waiting on deck yeah Jones's job right here is to get a clean inning so they can get the Addison Reed who was their closer here in Chicago payoff pitch to Cleet Thomas stays alive just got a piece of it Twins trailing five to four. They won both ends of the doubleheader last night. And all of their runs in this series have come as a result of home runs. Again, the three two foul back the fastball. Today, Justin Morneau with a three run homer tied the game. 3-3 after the White Sox took that lead in the third and then Oswaldo Arcia broke it with a 4-3 lead and the White Sox got two in the sixth and strike three and Thomas goes down boy he pulled the string right there good change up right there by Jones and Thomas way out front so Jones comes in and strikes out the first three batters he faces pull the string a little bit and Thomas swinging through it. Yeah, 14 runs scored by the Twins in the uh, two plus games, and all of them, like you mentioned, Dick, off the home run. Here's Florimone, 0 for 2, sacrificed his last time. Takes inside ball one. Third baseman Gillespie playing in a bit at third. And guarding the line at first base is Conurco. Against the extra base hit, the outfield slightly around on the left. And of course, Diazza now playing left field. Facing the tough sun there. Fouled away, and it's one and one. And that's what you want as a pitcher. You want to take the bunt away, and that's why Gillespie in on the grass. Also, Beckham at second base. You don't want to play too deep for Florimone because he's a guy that can take the ball with him, like drag it over towards second, make Conurco go off the bag, and maybe he'd walk to first. Showing bunt. Pulling back, taking the strike. And you saw Beckham come charging in. He's ready for that in case Florimone does try to take the ball with him. Last seven Minnesota hitters, Bert, five have struck out. Well, again, another 10 strikeout plus game for the Twins. Strike and three. At 11. Now. That's four strikeouts in a row for Nate Jones. And there are two down here in the top of the eighth inning. And that'll bring up Brian Dozier for the fifth time. We take a look at Tom Bernanski right there, the new hitting coach. A breaking ball right there to Florimone takes. So Dozier. Yeah, Bruno, uh, Tom Bernanski was a teammate of mine, part of the 87 World Series, and a guy that uh, struck out a lot, but hit a lot of home runs in his career. Dozier has been on base three times today, takes a strike. 
He has doubled, walked, and was hit by a pitch and has scored one of the Twins' runs. Andre Rienzo, the first Brazilian pitcher ever in the major leagues, worked five and a third innings, gave up four runs, seven hits. David Percy did a good job coming in as the left hander with an inning and a third, and now Nate Jones has been perfect. Four batters faced, four strikeouts. I don't think he can do better than that. Breaking ball and a strike, and it's one and two now to he, Dozier. He's working on five for five. Well, Jones knew you come in. He, I said he strikes out over a batter per inning. See if Flowers puts down the breaking ball. Fly ball left. to left yeah. field and drifting foul and out of play. He left that one up and uh, Dozier hit it hard, but foul. How about Nate Jones and how he has turned his season around? At the end of May, his earned run average was 6.58. Since then, 1.71. Boy, that's startling. It's so hard sometimes as a reliever because, you know, we we're talking about uh, Ryan Presley. One inning where you give up seven runs takes forever to get that baby back down if you're a reliever. You know, so Jones maybe early on had a couple of innings of crooked numbers that he allowed, and boom, that ERA shoots up. Aces empty, two down, one and two to Brian Dozier. Twins batting in the eighth inning. White Sox leading five to four. They had their chances in the bottom of the seventh. And it's now two and two to the Twins' uh, young second baseman. There's Joe Maurer, who would be next for Minnesota. Now it's a full count. Twins looking to avoid a third straight 90 loss season. They're 11 under 500 right now. Trying to make it three in a row. And fastball away. Just was right on that fastball. Back on the screen. Well, this is where a guy like Joe Maurer hitting behind you, you know, kind of makes you a better hitter because you're not going to throw him an off-speed pitch, or I wouldn't in this situation. I don't want to walk Dozier to get the Maurer. Now, Donnie Veal warming up. The other lefty in the bullpen for Robert Ventura. Try to change up and miss, so Ball he four. did walk. Yeah. So after four Dozier. strikeouts, Dozier walked. And now it's time for the Just for Men Auto Stop Cool Proof Stat. Well, Joe Maurer, you know, three batting titles. Think about this. As a catcher since 1989, the only catcher in Major League history to win a batting title in the American League, and he's had three of them. And pretty good company right there with uh, Miguel Cabrera and Omar Garcia Parra. Well, they're going to go with the left-hander, Donnie Veal, and Nate Jones struck out four, walked Dozier with, with two lefties coming up. Veal gets the call, and we'll be back for it.
for the final game of this series. Coverage begins at 12.30 p.m. Central. So, Donnie Veal, 28-year-old from Sierra Vista, Arizona, making his 30th appearance, will be facing Joe Maurer, lefty against lefty here. Maurer, one for three with a single run scored, has also walked. Hey, you saw the numbers on uh, Donnie Veal. Donnie Veal worked in game one yesterday against Joe Maurer, only batter he faced. He walked him, and then a couple of hitters later, Justin Morneau off of uh, Nate Jones hit the grand slam. Now in game two, Veal came into the ball game, faced one batter, and that being Justin Morneau, he struck him out. Recalled from Charlotte on July the 13th. Suffered three losses since then, so Maurer with two out. And the runner at first, Dozier. Control has always been an issue for Donnie Veal. 13 walks in 16 and two-thirds innings and 16 strikeouts. Fastball, good fastball in the low 90s, big breaking ball. Just a sweeping curve like that. Drive to left field. Diazza makes the play. Sun didn't bother him, it appeared. And Maurer is retired. Veal does his job. And we go to the bottom of the eighth. The White Sox still cling to the one-run lead. We believe if it's not worth driving, it's not worth building. And by Fox Sports 1, America's new sports network is coming in just seven days. Well, here we are, and uh, along I'll with Bert squeeze Weiland, in here. Yeah, you know, the way the booth is, you're at one end, and I'm at the <laughs> other end. I and, like you know, it. I will say this, you look familiar <laughs> when I see you in the booth, you know. Had a good time today. Like, yes, we've had a blast, and... Uh, you know, it's interesting. It's a competitive game with the White Sox and the Twins. And a lot of people don't realize they may not be going anywhere and they may not be fighting for anything. But every time you come to the park, what do you want to do? You want to compete and win a game. Oh, for sure. And, you know, these two teams have always built that type of, uh, I don't know, just bad friction sometimes over the years. You know, as the White Sox have basically dominated the Twins last year, winning 14 of the 18 ball games. This year it's the Twins that have the advantage eight games to two over the White Sox. They see each other 19 times this year alone. That's a lot of games to see somebody. Late to Cody, fouls it away, and it's one ball and two strikes. Presley.
I'd have to say that the Twins bullpen doing their job today because the White Sox had a chance to break open the game or at least get an insurance run and the Twins relievers have not allowed them to get to that point. There's a shot to center field. Thomas is there. One out. To Cody is retired. Well, the Fox Sports 1 fan cam caught fans here at the ballpark who are excited about Fox Sports 1, America's new sports network coming August the 17th. Lo and behold, Ron Kittle. You could have went through the whole show without showing him. Bobblehead day. Ron Kittle, the 83 AL Rookie of the Year, made the all-star team, led the league also with 150 strikeouts, but we're not bringing that up. I will. Okay. Played eight years, parts of eight years, with the White Sox. Very powerful hitter. I can attest to that. I, I was very honored to give up 430 home runs in my career, and the most home runs I gave up to one individual, that man right there, Ron Kittle, nine. I gave up nine home runs to him. I did not like him. So I want to get one of those bobbleheads. But you respected so, him. Oh, I respected you. him, of course, yeah. After I hit him in the ribs a couple times, hopefully he respected me a little bit. Three you know eighteen what? hitter off tremendous you. power, tremendous power. A guy that uh, got a great personality. He's loved here in Chicago. Two and one, the count to Gordon. Beckham. I don't love him, but he's loved here in Chicago. Well, let me tell you this: when you say about all the home runs he gave up, <laughs> all right, Larry <laughs> Lancaster, bat. our producer, tells us it's bat. nine home runs off, which of course nine, you knew. Yes, nine yes, home I runs. Know. The, po the I point don't have that I'm reminded, Larry. <laughs> Go ahead. Your point. Point I was going to make, and it was about you, Bert, is that you gave up a lot of home runs because you had great control. Ferguson Jenkins was the same way. Catfish Hunter. He never walked anybody. People hit home runs. That's why they were great pitchers. You had the great control. You yeah. didn't walk batters, yeah. and that's the worst. thing. And a lot of more solo home runs yeah. too. And Presley, at least three or as four. As we say it, walks Beckham <laughs> with one out here in the eighth inning. Connor Gillespie will be coming up, and right now he is uh, the author of the game-winning hit, if it remains that way. He got the single in the sixth inning to drive in Danks to make it 5-4. to four. So here is Gillespie, who is a one for four with a single and an RBI. And that's what the White Sox want to see. They want to see some of these young guys. Gillespie, 26 years old. Now he had a cup of coffee up and down with the Giants for three different seasons, but now getting a chance to play every day. And as this season winds down and the White Sox are looking to retool and rebuild, they want guys like Gillespie to get big hits like he did in the sixth inning. To build up his confidence, so maybe he is a third baseman for the future. Rick Hahn, the general manager of the White Sox. Meanwhile, Gordon Beckham has walked four times today. He's 0 for 1 with four walks, and that's a career high for him. 0 and 1, the count to Gillespie. And there's a strike fastball in there from Ryan Presley. Now, Maurer has done a great job of throwing out potential base stealers this year, but Beckham five stolen bases in six attempts and Presley if the White Sox are looking he has that high leg kick so might uh, have a uh, Beckham trying to steal second base get in the scoring position Beckham has five stolen bases in six attempts this year. Oh and two doesn't go and the pitch. Well, that's exactly Foul. where that pitch Bauer wanted at the end of giving the signs you saw him kind of move his fingers up like give it to me up in the strike zone that high fastball. That's exactly where it was and Gillespie fouled it off. Looking ahead to the ninth inning the twins will have Morno Willingham and Arcia. Right now it's five to four. Twins have still out hit the White Sox eight to seven. 0 and two to Gillespie. Lead by Beckham doesn't go, and the pitch is popped up. Kloof in short left field makes the catch for the second out. And now it's time for the King play of the game, brought to you by Burger King, where taste is king, and Gillespie could be king for the White Sox. Arcia couldn't handle that trap ball base hit. Run scored. It was Danks who came in. 
And the White Sox took a 5-4 lead in what has been a seesaw affair. First it was 3-0 Chicago, 4-3 Twins, and then the two runs in the sixth, turning the tide. And Addison Reed prepared to come in and close it. Here is Alexi Ramirez, who is one for four, double in the first inning. One and zero oh to Ramirez. You know, I think sometimes fans can say, "Well, we're getting rid of a lot of players that were here for a long time, but they didn't get the results they needed, and now they're going with the youth, and they can band behind them and see them develop the young players. It's happened so many times in big league history with so many teams. Well, the Twins are doing that. The White Sox now are doing that. You know, you lose a, a Matt Thornton, a Jesse Crane, a Jake Peavy, a Alex Rios recently. You hope that the kids, and they're young kids, a lot of them, get the opportunity and have success at the major league level because most all the guys they've traded away have had success. You hope that Garcia comes in at 22 years old and, and has some good seasons in a White Sox uniform. There's the third baseman, Kloof, and that will do it. And the White Sox are retired in the eighth inning, leaving one. We go to the ninth. One run lead for Chicago. Last chance for the Twins against the White Sox and Justin Morneau facing the closer, Addison Reed. Yeah, the new sheriff in town as far as the closer is Addison, Addison Reed. Now, he worked in last night's ball game, one shutout inning, gave up one hit, that to Jamie Carroll. But this is a save opportunity for Addison Reed, and he has 27 saves after getting 29 last year. You think about 27 saves, he's 4-1. and one. That's 31 by my California math, and the White Sox have only won 43 ball games. So this guy is a big part of uh, their future and their success. And Morneau hits a deep drive foul. 27 saves and 32 opportunities for Addison Reed. And uh, Morneau, by the way, is two for four against him with a home run. Well, if he throws another breaking ball like that last one, we might have a tie ball game. That was kind of a hanger right there. Reed with a good fastball, hard slider, and a changeup. 
Pitch is outside of Morneau, and it's one and two yeah. with Josh Willingham on deck. There was a fastball right there at 94. We have had men left on base in every inning with the exception of the White Sox fifth. Both teams in double figures in left on base. Here's a bounding ball. Beckham to his right. Throws out Morneau for the first out. One gone in the ninth inning to Josh Willingham. So Morneau hit a three-run homer back in the third inning. His only hit of the game. And now Willingham, who has a double in the fifth in four trips, has struck out three times, but facing Reed for the first time. Against Reed in his career, he is 0 for 7. You know, we just saw Nate Jones, another youngster, and in Reed right here, <laughs> pretty good one-two punch out of that bullpen. Low ball one. Well, the White Sox bullpen today uh, have been terrific. In fact, the Twins, the bullpens, both of them have been outstanding. Yep. White Sox bullpen 4.12 ERA combined. Not allowed a run since the third inning. And the Twins bullpen doing a good job in keeping it a one-run game. Meanwhile, it's 2-0 to Willingham. Dodgers, by the way, beat the Rays 5 to nothing. Seeing a lot of the highlights of the game between those two outstanding teams. And a fly ball pop-up into shallow right, and it's handled by Beckham for the second out. So Reed gets the first two hitters here in the ninth inning. And Oswaldo Arcia coming up with two down. Last chance for the Twins. Remember earlier in the ball game when uh, Gonzalez hit the two-run home run for the Dodgers? Grinky on him on. I said, ah, that'll be enough. And it was. Dodgers won 5 right. nothing. Well, back in the third inning, Arcia hit the home run to give the Twins a 4-3 to three lead. And the White Sox got two in the sixth inning. With Gillespie getting the big single to drive in the go-ahead run. Arcia got the game-winning home run in last night's win for the Twins in game two. In the 10th inning. Yep. They cut looking for the home run swing there. 0-1. Reed trying to finish him off. Arcia two for four with a home run and a double today. And Reed's done a good job of keeping the ball in the ballpark. Only three home runs allowed. This is his 49th relief appearance. And a ball hit deep to left center field. And on the warning track, the catch is made by Diaz, and the ball game is over. And Reed with his 28th save of the game, and the White Sox hold on to defeat the Twins 5-4. to four. Percy will get the win. He's 1-1. One one. Pelfrey loses it 4-10. Here is the catch against the tough son right at the base of the wall almost his fourth home run of the series but it's an out and the white Sox hold on and beat the twins 5-4 all right so i want to remind you tonight on fox it's back-to-back -back episodes of cops then bones and remember next saturday be sure to tune into fox sports one for more information on today's game and the latest in Major League Baseball news, log on to FoxSports.com on MSN, the world's favorite sports site. So for Burt Flylevin, this is Dick Stockton saying so long from Chicago, where the White Sox edge the Twins 5-4. You've been watching Fox Saturday Baseball.